And now, our feature presentation. And now, being recorded in front of a live studio audience of individuals who impersonate cows on Twitter, it's the most random show on the internet, it's TBK Live! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the most random show on the internet and the only show on the internet that guarantees that they will sue a social media platform, not because you're being an asshole, but because you're overly too nice. Welcome to TVK Live. <laughs> Setting the bar early for the show. I oh see. my God, fuck Devin Nunez. I, I'm not even a political person and I'm going, he's fucking suing Twitter because of a fake cow. If, if you're going to go on Twitter and you're going to sue it over a bot, profile you need to really reevaluate your life <sighs> he's making the wrong moves i'm done i'm done i could do yeah i'm done to do cow puns for the entire show i already see it coming i now <laughs> i now follow a twitter account i follow the twitter account of devin nunez's cow <laughs> it's the greatest uh, i bet you that that's like one of like you know I'm, i mean i'm not really familiar with twitter i don't want it that much but i bet you that's going to be like trending if not already. Oh, it, oh no. It, okay, so David Nunez's cow got cited in this lawsuit. Okay, so I guess I probably should. First of all, welcome to live today. <laughs> <laughs> and and joining me today is Brody. What up, man? What up, guys? What's happening? There's a reason you're joining us today, and we'll talk about that in a minute because it's C2E2 weekend. But we got a sure we got a lot of. First of all, before we get into the David Nunez story, because I have to discuss this. We are going back to the night. I love our. I mean, we're going back to the I love the ninety series in on Tuesday night, uh, because, uh, well, we knew we had. I knew this had to go up, <laughs> and went. Yeah, probably should post up the C two E two preview first. Well, with it being this weekend, yes. And then next weekend, you're going to get two episodes of live three if you come to Planet Comic Con. And uh, next week, you're going to get the 90s kids edition where we just talk about stuff we enjoyed as a kid, Ashley, and who knows who else will join for that one. And then on Thursday, it's our Planet Comic Con preview. And then on Sunday, we're going to actually be at Planet Comic Con doing the live edition of live. All right. What, uh, how have you been? <laughs> uh, I've been okay. Um, today's been a weird day. It's been very rainy and overcast in chicago here i've been slamming cherry pepsis like nobody's business i've been you're watching one bowl Netflix. away you're one bowl of special k away from a completely different lifestyle you know that oh right? man you should uh, for breakfast i had chicken nuggets no i meant the drug sauce. you had what chicken nuggets dipped in what ranch sauce that's that's my day and i've been watching netflix hold on anime. hold on hold on hold on is there a difference between ranch sauce and ranch dressing well that i'm Dressing is, is probably more <laughs> the appropriate. Sauce. You know, speaking of, of uh, colloquialisms sh- as such, I always get made fun of for saying soda over pop. Oh, I say soda all the time. Like, I don't understand I do too, the point of I, saying I pop. Guess it, I guess it's like more of a Chicago or Midwest based idiom that people say pop. And I've never said pop. I've always said soda. And people are always like, are you from like minnesota or something like why my my wife makes fun of me all the time for saying soda and i always get made fun of because i'm i was born and raised on the south side of chicago and go cubs is that right get get fucked (laughs) is that right is that no it is not at all right (laughs) i was born and raised on the south side of chicago and if any of our listeners or patrons to the the website uh are familiar with our fair city uh, the South Side of Chicago is very, very deeply Irish. It's a very Irish Catholic kind of neighborhood, and we had the since since St. Patty's Day was um, this past weekend. We went to the South Side Irish Parade, which is kind of a big deal. Like the mayor shows up. There's all these floats. You know, it's a big. By party. the way, so just out of curiosity, since you live in Chicago, how long does it take to get the green dye out of the damn river? You know, I've never actually been downtown when they've done it, but I have to imagine it takes them fucking forever. I'm sure the river is still green now. That's disappointing. Well, there with that. Well, guys, good night. That's been our show. We'll see. You. <laughs> <laughs> 
episodes. Shortest episode ever. No, that actually goes to episode three, but continue on. <laughs> um, it's very deeply Irish and Irish Catholic, and uh, I am of Irish Italian heritage. And uh, growing up, I always, for whatever reason, always leaned into my Italian side and not so much my Irish side. And going to the parade has made abundantly clear that even though I am part Irish, I know next to nothing about Irish heritage. And my wife just ridiculed me the whole time. Like, how are you a South Side born and bred Irish Catholic person and not know any of these like traditions and things of that nature? And I'm like, I guess I always leaned into my Italian side. I don't know. I mean, you would never, the, the long, the long, drawn out point i'm trying to make is that you would never be able to tell by looking at me that i was irish i don't even know where to go from that uh go cubs uh <laughs> did I, go from that? I hate I sh- you i should have known better because we always drive by the white Sox stadium every time we come into chicago like i should have known this and it never dawned on me until just now like oh i'm a dick yeah kind of <laughs> are but it's cool because we love you for it oh <sighs> Even though, but see, I'm a Royals fan, and the Royals play in the same division as the White Sox, so fuck the White Sox, go Cubs. Uh, I'm gonna get hate mail for that, aren't I? <laughs> you, you, you might, you might get a few uh, flaming pitchforks coming in. Well, you. I never know because we have two Chicago hosts now for shows. But, so, mm-hmm. but by the way, because the Brody and Richard show just debuted at TBKRadio.com, woo! And it will be on the website later this week uh, because it's a late night show. I have realized after listening to it. <laughs> I realize that's going to be our first late night show. Nice. Yeah. Because I went, okay, I'm a little off colored in this show. I'm good. Like, I, I, I feel like, okay, I, I kind of went in this co-host route that most of the co-hosts that I have do. So, yeah, I was like, this is a late night show. So cool. So that'll go up on Saturday nights now. Just to let everyone know. Uh, but you can check that out right now at tbkradio.com. And then Manda's show is coming, striking a chord. And I just, I get... I just assumed that all Chicagoans, Chicagoans, Chicagans, Chicagans, Chicagans are uh, Chicagans. fans of the Cubs. So that's just well, cool. and that's that's the cool, unique thing about having the two of us from Chicago. She's from what I've known of her throughout my life because me and Amanda had been very you know good friends for a long time before we came. They hate each um, other now. Fuck! It's like they were rivals. They fucking just like you. Now it's just like who has the better show. Um, she's a Cubs fan and I'm a White Sox fan. So it's just interesting that, that the cards I, fell down. I had, I had to do that. Uh, okay. So now back, is there anything else I need to get out of the way before we start talking about Devin Nunez? Like, I know where we're going in this show. I know we're going to discuss C2E2. That's I know the this play. is C2E2, but I do really, really have to discuss some stuff that happened today real quick. We'll just get through it real quick because it cannot not be discussed. Is this a poop today, story? What? Is this a poop story? No, 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 it's not. It's a nerd, nerd story, so it's still within our wheelhouse. <laughs> I had to ask if it's... Because this is what I send him. Hey, are you almost ready? I got to go make a deposit at the porcelain bank. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck sends that oh, shit? by the way, it was a false alarm. It was just a fart. <laughs> Have you ever farted and it smelled like rotten eggs? Dude, my farts today smell like... If you had taken a pola sausage and dipped it in sauerkraut and mustard, it's so bad. Actually, sounds amazing, and I don't know what they what to it, say about it, that. It, the the taste sounds amazing. The smell is really not that good. So, just to let everyone know, uh, my my farts have been smelling like sulfur. This is the weirdest conversation we've ever had on live <laughs> in a long time. But there's a reason. I it, it takes me back to like it makes me homesick. Mm-hmm. We had a ton of sulfur in our water growing up, so there was anytime you turn on the hot water, you would have a sulfur smell. So now my farts are reminding me of home. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I've got a small bit of homesick happening. So homesick and butt sick. Yeah, no, just the farts, just 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 smelly sulfury farts. Hashtag that. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag sulfur farts. Hashtag butt fuckery. Butt fuckery. That's that's the tagline for the Brody and Richard show. For <laughs> <laughs> so just a couple things I want to get through real quick. We won't we won't dawdle on them too long. Today has been like a huge day in terms of like trailers and announcements. Like I don't know. If, I'm sure you guys have been keeping up on the website, but like, okay. I posted the link to the Stranger Things three trailer that just dropped today. Yeah, I watched that trailer and went, eh. 
I love Stranger Things, so like I'm on board with it already. Like I'm already a built-in fan, but the trailer itself didn't like move me. Like the second season trailer blew me away. This one and the second season it, was such a letdown. Sorry, everybody. Everyone's entitled to their opinions. It just sucks that you have to be wrong with yours. Um, <laughs> well, aren't we just full of ourselves it, today? That cherry Pepsi has made you a much better person, hasn't it? It really has. It's given me a, a cultural stamp of approval. I don't know why. That doesn't make any sense. It anyway, doesn't. a wild cherry Pepsi just turns you into an ass hat. It does. It and really I always wanted, pe- and apparently I wanted Pepsi as a sponsor. Now I don't know. Mm. So, like, the trailer came out and it was great. Like, I was like, all right, this is a good trailer, but it didn't blow me away. Like, I'm going to watch it because I'm already a fan of the show, but it didn't make me any more excited than I already was. But then, right after that, a trailer for Quentin Tarantino that looks movie awesome. came out. I've, the posters started dropping, what, the last week? Once yeah, upon a time and in they had been teasing that the trailer was going to come, but they didn't really def- like drop a definitive date for when it was going to get released. I mean, here's all these posters happening, and the Margot Robbie poster happened, and I go, this looks amazing. I need to see a trailer, and I go searching for it as soon as that poster comes out, or as soon as I see that poster, and went, why is there not a trailer yet? And then today, my prayers from the nerd gods are answered and that trailer is so awesome like it blew like i am a hardcore tarantino fan and like in my opinion that man has not made a bad movie what, yet what what is the best tarantino film oh my god i think my two my favorite is definitely inglorious bastards okay so we we're the same i that's my favorite i remember going to see that movie in theater it's probably the only tarantino film i've seen in theater because most of his the- movies came out in the early 90s like the the ones that everyone really knows him for came out in the i've early seen 90s. all of his movies in theaters post uh post um pulp fiction i, I was too young for pulp fiction and way too young for reservoir dogs i, can't I was gonna go say later, you but... went to see uh well i guess once a no that i'm wrong um i can't think uh from dust till dawn is not him though he's in it no it's technically like he wrote it <laughs> and he produced it but technically that's a robert rodriguez movie that's also a very weird movie but like so like i'm thinking to myself I'm like all right we get stranger things it's cool once upon a time in hollywood which looks awesome if you guys haven't gone go yeah, that movie site, looks like, phenomenal go to the facebook page watch the trailer it'll blow your socks off and then shortly after that Fucking Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter post a video confirming for real Bill and Ted 3. And then my head just about exploded. Because that's what we needed in life. Kaboom. Like Bill and Ted 3. It's just, I, I cannot tell you how excited I am. Like, think about it. That year, the year that that movie gets released is the same year that Ghostbusters 3 gets released. Is that 20, or like the, the new one? Is it 2020? The cast. Are they doing it in 2020? Yeah. It, like, two, the, two of the biggest 80s uh, comedy franchises that people seem to most gravitate towards getting released new sequels in the same year. Like, unfucking real. I just wanted to get that out of the way. I had to cover those three because that just was, it was insane. Like one right after the other, like I saw stranger things. I posted it to the website or to the Facebook page. You did. Then right after I did that, I saw the once upon a time trailer. So I posted that right away. And then literally right after that, I seen the message uh, with Alex winter and uh, um, Keanu Reeves and posted that. Like it was just like, bam, 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 right after the other. It's a good day to be a nerd, man. It is, man. It's been it's been actually a really good week because there's a lot of video game news as well. But before we get to that, I have to talk about Devin Nunez. This story yes, is driving yes, me nuts. Yes, okay, sure. yeah, no, we, I I have to get back to this. So for anyone who does not know, now now there's some poetic justice here because when I wrote the story for the website, I did not know that there was an extra bonus part that I just found out. Mm-hmm. So I'm breaking that scoop on live. <laughs> so here's the story: Devin Nunez uh, is suing Twitter. There's some things in the lawsuit. Okay, you could probably argue like Twitter shadow bans people. Okay, you could probably argue that. But the best part of this is that he's suing because no one should be made fun of like he's been made fun of. When people in reality have been ripped to shreds so much worse than he was. Well, let's on just Twitter. there's a story just came out like uh, Shane Dawson was trending 2 days ago because of a story he told on a podcast 10 years ago 
about jizzing on a cat. Good <laughs> because, it, I mean, it's a joke, but people took it as in the gospel truth, and this poor dude got ripped to hell, and, and we're just sitting here going, okay... But Devin, and he never talked about suing Twitter, but Devin Nunez gets made fun of by an account who pretends to be his mom and Jesus H tits. It's, it's the worst thing in the world. And you know, it's funny cause I'm fairly certain. I mean, I'm not up on my law, but I'm fairly certain anything that falls under the Twitter umbrella falls under free speech. So he can't really sue for something that's protected by the constitution. Yeah, he's, he's flat out suing the, he's flat out suing, the, he's flat out suing Twitter for being me for people being mean to him. And I want to read the tweets. Like this is from a fake account called Devin Nunez's mom. <laughs> <laughs> At Devin Nunez, your district is looking for you. Are you trying to obstruct a federal investigation again? You come home right this instant or no more Minecraft. You can't help but laugh at that. And, and he cites another one where they make fun of Nunez, uh, Trump, and Putin doing the, uh, oh, what's the movie where they tie their butts together? And um, oh, oh, Human Centipede? Yeah, where they, make, they do a diagram of the three of them being a human centipede. And then, and then he cites Devin Nunez's cow. Or at Devin Cow, who had 2,000 followers as of the day of the lawsuit <laughs> and now has 200,000 followers the day after the lawsuit came out. I swear, this, this new internet age, not new, but this internet age that we live in these days never, ever, never ceases to amaze me. Sometimes I get pissed off at people on the internet, and other times you just have to be. I fucking died laughing at Tuesday. I found this story at two thirty in the morning. Mm -hmm. I was laughing so hard that I woke my wife up because I went, I have to write this. Like I, I said, and we talked about this on our show where I would not talk about politics. And then here's this story that falls in your lap. It's, I swear to God, it's like an episode out of black mirror. If you've ever watched that show, <laughs> I have, I'm not the biggest fan. <laughs> It, it what say what you will about the show itself, but this literally feels like this could be the topic of like an episode of Black Mirror. Yeah, no, I completely agree. So there's a better part of this story that his that only a couple of people have told me about. Someone sent me a message going, "Did you know he supported this?" Uh, apparently, last year or the year before, Devin Nunez wrote a bill about trying to get rid of frivolous lawsuits. Wow, talk about the pot calling the kettle black. Yeah, I know. I had to. I almost went, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. That, that, makes this, that makes that even more epic, is what that does. Even more epic. So yeah, that, that happened. I love, I love when people send me stuff, so thank you guys for that. <laughs> Tevin knew. Oh my god. So on top of that, I... I I don't know what's up with my dog, <laughs> but every time we go outside, she likes to run to the air conditioner and sniff it. Interesting. So I I don't know what that has to do with anything. I just wanted to say it because I just think it's weird and I get mad at her because I think she's going to lick it. One day, I think she's just trying to brave herself up to lick the air conditioner. I don't get pets, man. Like My cat <laughs> is the weirdest fucking... like. I swear to God, either he chewed on a cord while it was plugged in an electrical socket and deflated half of his brain, or That's terrible. he's just a dumb fucking animal. Because like he, like we have a gate in our from our living room to our kitchen, so like when we have the baby, she can kind of just roam around the living room and not. We don't have to worry about her, you know, getting too far away unsupervised. And so the cat. At first, didn't have any problems hopping like over the gate into the living room, but uh, it, was, it wasn't today. It was yesterday. He walks right up to it and he starts staring at it, like, like it's like he's he's staring at it like Matt Damon staring at a math problem in Goodwill Hunting, like he's trying to figure it out. So just, he's staring at it like Matt Damon does Ben Affleck, exactly. <laughs> and he starts to like. He wiggle his butt like he's going to jump over and he makes like a couple little hops but he backs out at the last second like it's the weirdest fucking thing okay, I've ever so, seen so all cats wiggle their butt before they do anything have you ever seen a human do this 
Because I just I now I just want to see humans start wiggling their butt before they do something. Isn't that what like the Kardashians made their fame off the back of on Instagram twerking? It's a much different kind of butt movement that they made their fame <laughs> on for, but that's a whole other argument. Ray J would beg to differ. Zing! My God. Well, that's what um, I was going with. I was going with an anal sex joke, and you were just I like, figured. "No, we're just gonna we're just gonna bury Brandy's brother." <laughs> But so he, and then finally he gets up the courage to jump, but like in midair, he gives up and lands straight on the gate and then flops over the other side. It was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. And then he just gets up and walks like, like nothing happened. That's one of those moments where he just felt, you just feel like he just gave up mid flight. Like, eh, I'm done. Like, you could see I'm the done. point in his flight pattern where he just gives up and flops right onto the gate i'm done I, if i had recorded that and thrown it up on youtube it would be like the next viral sensation it was the funniest fucking thing i'd seen in do you know time. bob saget's back hosting a video show i talked about this last week with manda like i'm still baffled by this i isn't he like making a name for himself being like a dirty comic like oh my god he is the dirtiest comic ever but and i mean he's funny We'll just go ahead and say that he is hilarious, but yeah, he uh, he's hosting a America's Funniest Home Video type show on ABC again. So is is it America's Funniest Home Videos or just like a, it's, t- it's, a show of that? It's kind? Uh, it's in that Nate. You remember when he hosted back in the nineties, right? Oh yeah, for sure. It's him doing the voices and stuff over more adult theme videos. Ah, uh, so this is not like ABC friendly content. This is like. It's late. It's called videos at late or videos after dark. I think is the mm-hmm. exact title, but yeah. But it's Bob Saget hosting video shows again, and I went. I'm back in the fucking nineties. I'm. I know we weren't going to talk about it, but I'm ninety percent sure it's nineteen ninety three again. I'm one step away from stepping out and having some goddamn pogs, dude. Like, I'm, like, wearing, it, I'm this, ready this for this. Is- like the nineties are big. Like Weezer's hitting big with gold records and uh, like shit I should, like that. Bob I, Saget's hosting TV. I shit you not. I'm trying to get my mother in law to get chunky highlights. Like it. <laughs> wait, just wait. Next, they're gonna the the acid wash jeans and the flannel is gonna be coming back. You flannel's already right been back. You have not been in a store in a long time, have you? Uh, I haven't been in a store that sells clothes. I was gonna say you like gotta stop buy. Store. You've gotta stop buying your clothes at Rite Aid or Costco. No, I buy mine at the Salvation Army or the thrift store. Salvation Army is great. You can have some great finds in there. I have a Dude, bowling I found, shirt like, with a name. Do you remember Doug. when I found that that River Song hallucinogenic lipstick T-shirt? Yes, that was like that was probably one of the greatest finds of my thrift shopping career. <laughs> you have a career in thrift shopping. Well, I used to like uh, when. Are like, you one? St- ap- are you one step away from being a Macklemore song? Yeah. I told you, yeah. I just don't know what's up with me, but I'm just like in asshole mode today. Hey, I, man, it's I entertaining. It's going to make for a good listen. Now that's no, that... I, used to, I used to like this. Uh, one more thing real quick, and then we'll dive into the real reason we're here. Um, cake? I, I love cake. I, oh God, I can go for a piece of cheesecake right now. Um, anyway, I used to live in this apartment building by myself before my, my wife and my two friends lived in the apartment above me. And they Did you were, ever use a broom and hit on the ceiling? Like, stop being so loud, you fucking assholes! No, it usually got me. It usually got me through a lot of lonely nights, if you know what I mean. Um, the the broomstick, it, man, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, and they were big thrifters. Like, they would go to the thrift stores. Like, they'd take one day and they'd go around thrifting, and then they'd post like. They'd buy stuff for themselves, but if they found like really rare things or real like really profitable items, they'd resell it on eBay and make a profit. And there was like some good money to be made doing that stuff. Like they were very, very smart people and they made some bank. And I like I'm like, I gotta get in on this, but I never made any bank because I always just found shit that I wanted to keep for myself. I was gonna say, yeah, you found cool <laughs> stuff, but so I kept it. <laughs> I didn't end up I only went with them like three times maybe and I didn't really end up making any money because one, I was too lazy to post it on eBay to I don't like and I don't understand uh, PayPal at all. And anytime I found stuff while I was there, I just it was like cool shit I just wanted to keep for myself. 
Yeah, I can't blame you. Uh, speaking of Devin Nunez, Alan Dershowitz, who was a lawyer on the OJ trial, said he wouldn't represent him. <laughs> Ooh, man. <laughs> That's when great. OJ's lawyer. Yeah, when one of OJ's lawyers, who was able to get him off, says, this dude doesn't have a case, yeah, you are screwed. <laughs> That's awesome. I love the internet today. It's great. Uh, where was? Uh, don't forget to visit us on Twitter at TBK Magazine. Uh, our, I'm actually working on making our Twitter a much more fun place to visit. I gotta go start getting back on a Twitter because, like, I got off of it for a while. I got, I was off of it for a while. Then I jumped back on, like, literally the week that Trump got elected in the office. And I just started getting into the worst political fights. And then I stopped for like the longest time because I'd be scrolling through my feed. And it wasn't even like intelligent, thought provoking discourse. It was just people slinging mud at each other back and forth, which is pretty much what it is. But you can base your Twitter lo- timeline on something awesome. Like for me, it's Devin Nunez's cow. I'm sorry I'm harping on this, but this is a damn funny Twitter account. Uh, it's Devin Nunez's cow, pro wrestling, and RuPaul's Drag Race. Like that's ninety percent of what my. T- that's pretty much ninety percent of what my Twitter timeline is. <laughs> speaking, of, me. speaking of RuPaul's Drag Race, I, I again, I don't know. It, it it's one of those days. I had no plan for this show other than what we were going to talk about for C two E two. So mm-hmm. yeah, screw it. Speaking of RuPaul's Drag Race, that has become my all time favorite guilty pleasure show. Can I tell you, I, and I might have mentioned this on the show. You haven't before. seen it yet because you're a dickbag, and I've been trying to tell you to watch it for so fucking Dude, long. Dude, I have like such an intense backlog of shit I got to get on watching that I am just ready to throw my hands up and just hit the, you know, nuke it button. But I do want to watch that because you do that, and I have to get on Letterkenny. I still haven't gotten to Letterkenny yet. You need to watch Letterkenny. Is probably going to be a much easier watch, but um, we're watching season 11 of RuPaul's Drag Race is happening right now. And I think when Ashley comes back on the show, we're going to go on a we're going to do an entire episode devoted to RuPaul's track. At some point, there will be an entire live episode devoted to the show. Can I tell you what my all time favorite dirty or uh, I guess guilty pleasure TV show is? And I might have actually mentioned this on the show a while back. I don't remember. Is it is it the House of Mouse? Because you're a mouse tool. Nope. I'll give you a hint. Uh, let's see if you can guess. All right. It it was an MTV reality based TV show. Is it next? I love next. Nope. No, next is great. Next is that game show that when you're it, it's technically Tinder before Tinder. And you know next I'm right. wasn't a guilty pleasure. Like I just straight up fucking loved watching that show. But there was a show uh on MTV and not Jersey Shore either because I am openly a fan of that show as well. Oh I, I became a fan of that show because of an X. I'm not even gonna lie about it. It's they were hey you should check this out. I went, okay, they're, do- by the way, speaking of Jersey Shore, Vinny and, oh, the other one. Um, Ronnie? No. The, Mike? No, the funny Pauly one. Pauly D? Pauly D. Vinny and Pauly D will be doing a shot of love, and they are doing a dating reality show coming soon. And I went, I have to watch that. I do, because Pauly D is the best. I fucking love Pauly D. They're two D. of She's my, like f- the best. Like, I love the two of them. They're the reason I kept watching the show. I can't. I can't stand techno music or trap or house or whatever kids are calling it these days. But uh, earlier or later last year, uh, they had uh, DJ Pauly D was coming through and he was doing a set. And I almost went to that just to see fucking Pauly D. Like, I love Pauly D. He's funny. He's smart. He doesn't take himself like he takes his Guido personality seriously, but he knows he's in on the joke of the show. Oh, yeah, no, when you can take the joke and be able to run with it, it's even better. Exactly. So that's why I think I like him as much as I do. But no, I'll, I'll tell you, my favorite guilty pleasure show is always going to be Laguna Beach. I, I don't know if we can be friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, I didn't watch The Hills. The, the, the Hills. I never watched The Hills. But Laguna Beach. Isn't that was- the same thing? Well, it's the spinoff. The Hills just focused on Lauren Conrad, whereas the Laguna Beach had like the whole cast of characters. And it was like as trashy as trashy gets. Like, um, what was that one? Like, you know, 902. Everyone knows 90210, but there was another Fox party of five like, Melrose Place. I could do Melrose this Place. That's the one. Laguna Beach is like a reality TV version of Melrose Place. Oh and it was God. so fucking addicting, and I was so embarrassed to be a fan you of it. You and my best friend point- from high school absolutely was addicted to that show. 
and I bought all this. I had all the seasons on DVD at one. I point. bought their like, action figures. <laughs> well, I didn't. I thought you I were going. I thought you were going to say figures? that. No, I don't know. I thought that's what you were going to say, and I went. I was gonna. I was gonna say that's true. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, that's my guilty pleasure, Laguna Beach for sure. So RuPaul's Drag Race. So we watch in season eleven, and they do this whole. They do a bit where a few of the queens are d- d- doing an entire church devoted to Britney Spears. And it's fucking hysterical. Go out of your way to watch it. And I tweeted about it because mm-hmm. uh, I tweeted at a drag queen by the name of Nina West, and she is hysterical on the show. Like I, she's become my favorite queen in a long time. And after I tweeted at her, about ten minutes later, she followed us, and I freaking had a you know you know when you talk to a celebrity and you kind of have that moment like we're now best of friends. <laughs> yep, I had that moment. I was freaking my, out. I, I was I was having that. Oh my god! I was running around as if I was. I don't even know at this point. I was trying to think of a good meme, but I can't think of one. I think my biggest celebrity moment on Twitter was when, like, way getting the way way back machine when I first started writing for TBK. The Kevin Smith did, one. Like, what's up? The Kevin Smith one. Yeah, remember when we were doing the sevens lists for yes. a while? Well, I mean, we I still do this, lists. This, yeah. I did the sevens list for a Kevin Smith and I posted it to Twitter and he like uh, favored it and retweeted it. And I damn near came in my pants instantly. That was the coolest thing. And then a few days after that, he had posted some uh, smart ass comment about cop out, like how everyone hates it. Like I mean, Kevin Smith loves to hate on his own movies uh, jokingly, I assume. But then I had replied to it. I'm like, cop out's actually pretty, pretty decent. You shouldn't harp on yourself so much. Like I'm a fan and I'm proud of it. And he and he he replied to me. He's like, Shh, "Don't say that out loud. You might get crucified for it." Like he was like he, he has had a point. an actual comedic <laughs> conversation with me, and I just I love that man. The, the one I time, loved him so much more. The one time I met Kevin Smith, uh, I had Nutsy with me, and I had to tell the entire squirrel story. Like he stopped everything he was doing just to be like, "Tell me about your squirrel." And <laughs> like people love to make fun of him and they love to rag on him. Like I've noticed online, there's like a growing contingent of people that really like to rag on Kevin Smith. And I don't understand why, because I've never met the man. Mostly because he can take it. I think part of it is it's because he can take it. He, oh, absolutely. Like he used to not be able to like right around when red state came out, he got really like butthurt by a lot of that stuff. Let but me then, tell you something. That's Kevin Smith is Kevin Smith's most underrated film. It's up there. I think his. I personally think his most underrated film is Tusk. I I couldn't get into Tusk. I tried Tusk was so, so great. much. Like I like it, but I also didn't at the same time. I I don't know how I feel. It's a weird movie. But uh, he's like he's such. I've always wanted to meet him. Like the day my two holy grail like celebrity meetups are David Duchovny, which I can already check off, and Kevin Smith. Like those are the two of the foundations of my nerd like life. And I met David and it was awesome. Now I just want to meet Kevin. I don't understand why people rag on him so much because he seems he's just a nice dude. He's a fan and he's in a position to be able to share that fandom with the world. Like his celebrity allows him to be a geek on a massive scale. And what that's something you and I dream of doing. I'm, I'm pretty sure I like to refer to myself at times as the Dollar Tree version of Kevin Smith. I like would, if I, you, you know, I would say I would I'd give yourself some credit. I'd say you are the big lots version of Kevin Smith. Oh, but then you couldn't find me. No, that's probably more accurate <laughs> actually. No, that's probably more accurate. The problem with Big Lot and I hate going to Big Lots. I love Big Lots, but I hate going to it because anytime you walk into that store, you know, it's going to take you forever to find any fucking thing because that is the most disorganized store in the entire planet. Fucking A it is. I don't know if it's bad where you are, but it is really bad here. There's <laughs> one Big Lots right down the street it's a uh, it's right next door in between a cvs and like a neighborhood grocery store and i um we were doing laundry one day and i had to go get quarters and i didn't want to walk all the way down the block to the grocery store so i just walked next door to the big lots to see if they could get quarters but i walked in the door and like my soul left my body and i turned and walked right out the door like it looked like the most unkempt like store no, i've what it ever is. been in like most of them feel that way. I there was a time frame though. I couldn't walk into a Kmart without coming out and taking a shower. I used to love Kmart. Kmart. There was a Kmart where I grew up. It, well, I mean, in the area where I grew up, where it had a restaurant in it. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm still yeah, weirded didn't, out. Didn't by a this? lot of Kmart's have like Pizza Hut or not Pizza Hut, uh, Little Caesars back in the day? Uh, I don't know. Ours had just a place that served hot dogs, and I'm sorry, but a Kmart hot dog just does not sound like my idea of good food. No, Dude. but yeah, the the Kmart by us had a Little Caesars in it. That's way too nice. Like, wait, the Little Caesars that's now or the Little Caesars that was? Well, then? I mean, it's Little Caesars, but like back in the day, Little Caesars. So not back now, when Little Caesars. Caesars was actually making their pizza, right? Not just you know reheating it, reheating it. And, Sorry, you man. know, I do enjoy yeah. some Little Caesars, but not. You know, every once in a while when I'm in the mood for pizza and I don't feel like spending 20 bucks on a pizza pie, I'll just go to Little Caesars. Oh my God, you're bucks. Chicago showing. You just said pizza pie. Does anyone, <laughs> does anyone actually fucking say those same exact words together? Hey, what you doing? Let's go get a piece of pie. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, my, my Chicago is definitely peach? showing, isn't it? Peach pie? I love peach. No. No, pizza pie. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Uh, no one actually yeah. says it that way. I that might be a first even in this show's history. And this show's been around for 150 episodes. Like this is 150. 150, and we're breaking ground. <laughs> yeah, you, you said pizza pie. <laughs> well, oh, I know what gosh. the pre I know what the previously on the show's the next show is gonna be. It's gonna be this moment right now. <laughs> like, what's your Chicago show? <laughs> I have not had... For anybody who is listening, please tell me how to get sleep. I am not sleeping, so I find everything funny right now. Dude, this is just going to make for the... like. You need to sleep This for is your the health. stoner episode alive. That's what you're, you're like, lack of sleep. I'm jacked up on too much Pepsi right I'm now. Drinking, it's, this is my second pot of coffee. I am running <laughs> on my second pot of coffee and a diet. Oh, oh. I probably should make this statement. I drank a diet Dr. Pepper. My 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 mission in life now for Lent, and I'm not Catholic, but I was like, I'm going to give up something mm-hmm. because I felt, you know, let, I'm going to try to do something to better myself. And I said, I'm going to give up regular sodas because you're fucking high. Are you fucking high on fucking life? Uh, <laughs> I I said I was going to give up regular sodas and I, I have been so disappointed with myself. I haven't had a regular soda now in two weeks. Drinking, well, I'm very proud of you, one. But two, drinking a Diet Dr. Pepper is like putting your mouth up to a horse's asshole right before it has diarrhea. Actually, I enjoy Diet Dr. Pepper. It's the Diet Max. I'm drinking Pepsi Max. I like Pepsi Max, actually. Pepsi it, Max is It decent. makes food taste weird, though. That's I don't know if I've ever issue with that, that, actually. That's my only issue with it. So, I mean, I drink tea and other stuff. Like, I'm not a heathen and just live on sodas. But if I have regular sodas around me, I was doing five or six regular sodas a day. And I know that drinking your calories is a health nightmare. Oh, it is. And that's it what, is. that was my issue. So I'm trying to find things that are zero calorie. I'm drinking tea without sugar. I'm going through some cranky days right now. But uh, writing has been a fuck ton better. So. I don't know if that says anything or not. You take the good, you take the bad, and there you have the facts of life. life. My God. <laughs> uh, oh God, I'm feeling I'm feeling the giggles now too. I know at this time the tagline for this episode is going to be the giggle shits. Uh, <laughs> the giggle shits. <laughs> okay, so do we need to talk? All right, let's 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 get on point. Let's let's get let's talk about what we're here to talk about. Uh, so pie. Uh, my favorite kind. You got me hooked on pie all of a sudden. Uh, okay, so we're here to discuss C2E2. You're going to be covering it this weekend. I'm very excited. Uh, typically, I usually only mainline Wizard World. Uh, I very seldom I'll go to C2E2 unless there's like a guest or something that like I really, really need to see. Like two or three years ago, uh, John Cusack, who is like my favorite actor of all time, uh, was you doing just said it. earlier in the show, David Duchovny is your favorite. Well, actor all right. All so David Duchovny and John Cusack are two of my favorite actors of all time. Then you just said Kevin Smith is one of your favorite people, but he's a director, so there's a difference. <laughs> I'm gonna try to make your life hell now. <laughs> You're doing a good job. <laughs> so three oh, of my God. all-time favorite people that I've ever that I've ever wanted to meet are John Cusack, David Duchovny, and Kevin Smith. Now I've met John Cusack. And I met David Duchovny. I just got to meet Kevin Smith. But uh, typically, I don't go to C2E2 unless there's like a pressing need for me to go. Just because I've always favored Wizard World. 
which is blasphemy to anyone who goes to conventions no offense to anybody who loves wizard world but it's no non offense what's like c2e2 is awesome and so is wizard world like it's not a slight on either or well no it's just i'm actually making a dig at wizard world i think it's more of a corporate convention where see that's why i didn't go to c2e2 as much because back in the day i always felt c2e2 was the corporate version and wizard world was the more kind of i guess you'd say like you know, off the beaten path punk rock version of comic cards. But now it like I agree with you. I feel like it's now you know starting now you switch. now you see the truth. Now you see that like, your eyes have been opened up to what is real and what is not. And and Wizard World is just kind of starting to go a little downhill. I don't expect like, we Wizard World to be around last in five year, years. And a bunch of the guests canceled the day of. Like they downsized the convention a great deal. Like it just felt like it was a shell of its former self. But long story short, I didn't typically go to see 2E2, but then I saw the lineup for this year in just the panels alone, but you know, just the panels alone, I'm like, I've got to go all weekend. And then they started dropping like the guests and stuff. And like, there's not any like holy shit celebrities, but there's a lot of really goddamn good guests. Like the biggest, I think the biggest name this year is Paul Rudd. Uh, Paul Rudd's gonna be I don't know year. about that's the biggest name. Well, in terms of like stature in Hollywood, I mean, like he's an Avenger. He's an Avenger. Is that now how we judge it, everybody? Are they into the Avengers or not? I uh, kind of feel like it. I mean, like that's like the biggest thing in pop culture right now, is it not? The Avengers and the MCU. It is. It. You're, you're right. But I was just trying to make an argument to not agree with you. <laughs> yeah, it's very hard to not agree with me. Ming Chen's gonna be person. there. Come on, uh, Ming Chen. Love Ming Chen. From uh, Comic Book Men. He is going to be there. I remember we when we went um, to Wizard, was it last year or two years ago? And uh, this is going to be the last Wizard story, I promise. And we went, and Ming Chen was going to be there. And you know who else was there? Um, I forget the guy's name, but he's the guy that Flanagan always called in to appraise like, the toys oh, and the, such. Oh, the toy guy that they have? Yeah. What know, is his fucking name? I, I know and who like, it is. I see his face, but I can't think of his name. Yeah. He was there and he wasn't like scheduled or anything. And he had his own booth. Like he was like appraising toys and shit. And like I wanted to stop and say hi, but I was too goddamn nervous to do it. I'm really sad that that show is dead. I'm, I'm really sh- I'm really sad that AMC decided to cancel it. Yeah, that does suck. But I get, I get the feeling that they, that, that might be like a, a streaming pickup soon. Because that hope. show was so good. I hope. I hope that someone goes, you know what? Rob Bruce. Rob Bruce is his name. There it is. Rob Bruce, yeah. I hope that- he looked j- every much the hobo in real life that he did on TV. <laughs> this is true. I hope that somebody picks up the show. After meeting Brian uh, O'Halloran, he gave me some of the best stories that happened at that comic book store. That My was- favorite episode of that show is when he came in and ran the store for the day. Uh, he talks about that. But he goes, there was a reason he was there. They play poker in the back all the time. I don't fucking doubt it. There's a reason that poker table is actually there. Because they actually play poker? Yeah. (laughs) Because he goes, no, we we do this all the time. We will go in there, we'll play poker, and I really just want to be around him again. Brian, I still have an autograph for you. We'll get it. I'll get it. I fucking love Brian O'Halloran. He just seems like such a sweet dude oh he's he's one of the he gave us like an a he gave us some life advice that i still to this day hold and like too so near and dear to my heart where he goes we talked about i talked about how i was in a failed marriage and he goes so stop your marriage didn't fail you just weren't good at marriage with that person and and he, then he gave this like sports analogy and i just sat there and went i just had the best life advice given to me from brian o'halloran i just want brian o'halloran to give me a hug I've peaked. I just want a Brian O'Halloran hug. He also stole my <laughs> wife's car. Oh. There well. okay. And held her at not knife point to take him somewhere, but by spatula. Well, if there's somebody who's gonna do it, at least it's Brian O'Halloran. Yeah, that was a great story. And then that that's one of my favorite moments ever. Like my wife was like, Yeah, he came out and just got in the car and picked up the cake spatula and said, I need to go get some orange juice. <laughs> Fuck. And I went I have the greatest life ever. But um, getting back to C2E2, yeah, like the lineup this year. Yeah, Paul Rudd's the biggest name. I, I'll agree with this. I can't argue. Now, I, after looking at the lineup, I cannot argue it. It, uh, like some of the people that they have, 
are are great. Like, don't get me wrong, but like, there's how do I? Put, there's just there's going to be so many good names there this year. Like, uh, do you know who Adam Levine is? The lead singer of Maroon Five? No, 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 no. Uh, or he's like, I think he's like, uh, I'm I'm looking at the list right now, and he's one of the guys who founded like Cards Against Humanity. Oh, okay. Um, I know that's not a real like. No, like, but that's all. Aw- that's pretty cool though. I mean, but there's like, like look at. I got it. Hold on, I got to pull this list up. I'm up. In, the, I, I'm, I've got the guest list in front of me. I'm gonna I've pull got... it up too, like because I have the app downloaded to manage my schedule for the weekend, but like the, the app kind of sucks in terms of surfing the content. So I'm gonna pull the website. Telling... Up. But like, there's gonna be so many. Like, I'm not a big fan of the Cobra Kai YouTube show. I like the Karate Kid movies, but I just I never really got I into enjoy the, Cobra the TV Kai. show a lot. Actually, they're doing a William Zabka and Ralph Macchio reunion. Like, they're the two of them are gonna be there together, and they're gonna do a panel. Like, that's freaking awesome. One hundred percent acceptable. Um, were you? Did you ever watch Freaks and Geeks? Did I ever watch Freaks and Geeks? Yeah, well, it was a stupid question. Jeez. John Francis Daly and Martin Starr are going to be there doing a Freak, Freaks and Geeks reunion panel. Yeah, no, I, I feel I like the idea of a Freaks and Geeks reunion panel, but you still need a couple of others. Like, let me rattle off some of these names. Alicia Silverstone. Amy okay, Joe let, let, Johnson. let's go in order here. Let's just let's just break this down. I don't. I, I, let's just go through the whole list. That's what we okay. should do. I don't know anything about AMC's End of the Badlands. Alfred, I'm going to say his last name wrong. Goff, 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 Go, Goff. I think it, it either either or. Uh, Into the Badlands is a good show. I watched the first season mostly because I'm a big Walking Dead fan, and it always came on right after the Walking Dead. And I also like martial arts like based stuff, so I was in for it. I haven't really kept up with it, unfortunately, but it's a pretty good show. Um. I got the guest list here too. Uh, Alicia fucking Silverstone. That's man. where I mean, as much as I enjoy uh, Alfred Goff, by the way, was a writer for Smallville. I never liked Smallville. That's blasphemy. I did, <clears throat> but I'm a Superman purist, and I just felt like that show took way too many fucking liberties. He also it, wrote Spider Man too, the only good original Spider Man movie. Yeah. Uh, All right, he gets a pass with that one. Yeah. So, but let's Alicia Silverstone. I mean, pretty much. You Batgirl? I mean, Clueless and Bat- I had Batman such and Robin. A crush on her back in the day. I still have such a crush, a crush on her now. Who are we she kidding? She looks amazing now. Like she looks great. But my God, Clueless is an institution. And they're doing a Clueless reunion panel. Her, I don't. They didn't mention if Paul Rudd was going to be. Paul on Rudd's the panel. part of the panel. Yeah, I actually just okay. saw that on the homepage. Alicia Silverstone, Paul Rudd, and Donald Faison, and Brecken Meyer, and Brecken Meyer. Yes, uh, they're gonna uh, Amy Jo Johnson, like three of the original Power Rangers. Amy Jo Johnson, Amy Jo Johnson, pa- uh, Billy Yost, and Austin St. John, and the Black Ranger too. Uh, is he really? Walter Jones oh. is gonna be there. Yeah. Um, Brecken Meyer, we talked about, is gonna be there. Clark Gregg fucking colson i mean how awesome is that fucking colson is going to be there I, I um let's just go ahead and say this because i feel like i'll be ridiculed if i don't my worlds is my world of two shows are com- colliding at this convention hardcore with uh, the wrestling yeah cm punk's going to be there who does nothing I with wrestling that. anymore but he's also now the writer of drax the destroyer in the marvel comic series fucking a so he's having a great life uh, Eric Bischoff, Tony Schiavone, uh, da, 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 Marty Scroll, The Young Bucks, and Kenny Omega. Jesus, all going to be like there. Wrestling's always had a pretty big presence, at, like whether it's C two E two or Wizard <sighs> World. I, I will say this: after being a wrestling fan now and realizing something, I feel wrestling. <sighs> um, hosting a wrestling podcast changes my views. I feel. But I feel wrestling is the closest a human being can ever be to being a superhero. Yeah, I can see that. And if anybody wants to to argue that thought with me, I tell you to go look. I will send you a YouTube link. That's Um, all I'm going to say. Let's see. What else we got here? We got uh, Dave Mustaine from Megadeth (laughs) is going to be there this year. 
Megadeth. Um, David Tennant, obviously. Of course. Uh, John Barrowman. Uh, see who else. What's that? John Barrowman. Yep, John Barrowman. Uh, one personal hero of mine, uh, Jennifer Hale. If if anyone is familiar with who she, they might not be readily familiar with that name, but she. If anyone in this uh, who listens to this show or reads this website is a gamer, and if they're familiar at all with the Mass Effect series of video games, when you create a character in the game. You can create one as either male or female. And she does the voice of the female version of the main character. And I, every Mass Effect game that came out, every character I created when I first got the game, I always started out as a female character. And I just, I would kill to meet her. Has she gonna be there? done a uh, lot of stuff that's not, like, I mean, I know, like, hasn't she been the voice or... Is she one of those people who you just know, but you don't really you just know? know? You know, but you don't know. It's kind of like the dude from Supernatural who's in ev- the guy who plays Crowley. Yes. Who's oh, in God, everything. Yeah, no, it's going to kill me that we can't. I can't think of his name. He was in Doctor. He was in a Doctor Who episode. Yeah, he's in season season in a Tenet's episodes. He's he's in a ton of science fiction stuff. You know who you missed from the wrestling world? Unless Jim I didn't Cornette. Say Jim, Jim Cornette. Cornette. Who, if you um, want to go to a fun panel, that's the one you want to go to. Trust me. Uh, Lloyd Kaufman, the <laughs> founder of Troma Entertainment. Oh, my God. Uh, I was just looking up Jennifer Hale because you have me. Let, let's stop before we go to Lloyd Kaufman because I could talk about Lloyd Kaufman for 35 minutes. She has done a lot of stuff. Oh, let me pull up her page here. Oh, my yeah, she, God. Like, I mean, that's what I know her from to start with is is uh the Mass Effect series, but I mean, I assume that she's done um, I'm, I'm movies. Stu- she's been in Wreck It Ralph. She was in. Um, she was the original the voice Cowboy- of Sonya Blade. Yep, that's crazy. Um, she's in the in Mighty Ducks uh, animated series. She's also in the Tick, the animated series. Mass Effect. Ralph breaks the internet. She was in. Uh, she's in an episode of USA High. Holy shit. She does uh, voices for uh, uh, Overwatch. I know that's a game that's popular My now. My God. Um, like, this is, a, this is a who's who of video games and animation that I have never seen before in my life. She's done Rick and Morty. My God. She, uh, She's Cinderella on the House of Mouse. The voice for Friday in the... Uh, Tony Stark's, you know, suit after Jarvis leaves in the Avengers Assemble cartoon series. Yeah, she's done a lot of superhero cartoon series. Yeah, like there's a lot like her. I mean, it's mostly, you know, video games I'm looking at. Like she does a voice uh, for in Halo 5. Um, she's a voice in Batman Arkham. You, you, you um, actually go and you look at all like anytime a voice actor or actress comes along and you go, oh, I know their one voice from this. And then you look them up and it just hits you going, Oh, I have heard them my entire life. Yeah. Like, I, like I'm scrolling through this list. Yeah, right now. You can't go over this list. Like it's just the, the amount of stuff that Jennifer Hale has voiced is un- mm-hmm. she's captain Marvel and the Avengers earth mightiest heroes TV series. Like all these video games that she's been a part of. I've played. Like, it is insane. She does Carla on Phineas and Ferb. Oh, my God. She's, you know, she was on uh, a couple episodes of Two and a Half Men. She did uh, Big Bang Theory. Um, That's a lot. Of, she does. She's She is very diverse That's in insane. her portfolio. She's part of the new DuckTales series, which is really good if no one has seen it. Um, let's no, see. her list is the longest list I've seen for any. Like when you go and look at a voice actor's list, mm-hmm. and all you see is just things from childhood, you you, your mind is blown. All right, let's let's go to Lloyd Kaufman because again, like there's just so much there. But Lloyd Kaufman, if if for any of our readers who are are not familiar, and there might be a few, I don't want to assume. Uh, is the founder of Troma Entertainment. Um, Troma Entertainment, I guess to kind of sum it up, is they do like 
really super C and D grade horror films. And they do a lot of parodies. Like, you know who came from trauma? James Gunn. That's where he started. Uh, was in trauma entertainment. Um, they did, they do films. Like if you're a passing horror fan, the toxic Avenger came from trauma, uh, class of Newcomb high, Tromeo and Juliet. So there's a list of people who have done, who started mm-hmm. out with trauma. And, of course, James Gunn, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, mm-hmm. Eli Roth, Samuel L. Jackson, Billy Bob Thornton, Vanna White. Like, it is just, it's it's crazy. It is crazy that so many people that we like hold in like high regard in terms of entertainment guests got their start on such trashy oh i don't mean that in a negative no lloyd Kaufman is the definition of like if you want a a, just a terrible horror movie and not terrible like they're they're terrible but they're not terrible they're purposefully terrible like they're purposely b-grade cinema like it's just like the absolute bottom of the barrel grindhouse stuff and it's awesome so many great Tromeo and Juliet comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, my personal favorite drama film to this day is Poultry Geist. I love Poultry Geist, oh which is gosh. the weirdest fucking movie you will ever see in your entire life. If you have a chance, if someone goes, we're going to watch a movie and it's called Poultry Geist night of the living or night of the chicken dead. Mm-hmm. You, you have to go out. You have to watch it. Like you cannot say no to that. All right, let's go back to the list here. Trauma is amazing. So, oh, you wonder how so, I got introduced to trauma? How? Back in the day, E used to have a show, and I don't remember what the show was, but they would walk, go around the Cannes Film Festival. Mm-hmm. And every year, they would highlight trauma. Okay. Because they were always at the Cannes Film Festival messing things up. They were doing exactly what trauma does best. And that's how I got introduced to trauma. I got introduced to trauma at like age 10. Interesting. That's a kind of a young age. Because of E. Because of mainstream. Okay, so this this thing that's not actually mainstream entertainment was Mm -hmm. introduced to me through mainstream entertainment. It's funny how that works sometimes, isn't it? Trauma is is awesome. All right, let's get back to this list. Uh, Martin Starr, who you guys... uh, might remember i mean like he's one of those guys that you might not know the name but once you see the face you <laughs> recognize him instantly that guy's been in a you bunch know, of stuff too like he's you know freaks and geeks he started on but like he's very recently been in silicon valley which is so fucking that's funny. a great it, show that's a great show that show has no business being as laugh out loud funny as it is and it is consistently the funniest show i've seen on tv in a long time uh, party down's not a bad show either if you've not seen that party down is great that's that, one of the that's, that's, that's a one that, that gets forgotten about yeah that's one that's just kind of got slipped under the rug it's a really good show um there's a big push on voice acting this year like maurice lamarche you know pinky in the brain futurama like pretty much every anime rob show paulson that's ever existed. yeah no him rob paulson and uh jess oh crap uh, i'm not looking at the list jess actually. mcneil uh is that his last name let me uh, hold on. Uh, Tress McNeil. No, yes. Jess Harnell. That's who. I, uh, oh, okay. And and no, yeah, Tress is also the voice of Dot. So, yeah, you get this. You get this list of all these people who did the Animaniacs, and then you go, "Oh crap! They've done everything else." This is what led me down the rabbit hole. Like literally, between Maurice Lamarche and Rob Paulson alone, they've literally been a part of every animated show you ever remember. <laughs> Yeah, because Maurice um, Lamarche is in the Ghostbusters cartoon. I fucking I've been binge watching it like the old the real Ghostbusters is on yeah. Netflix, but it's only on Netflix till the end of March. So I've been binge watching the shit out of it just to be able to have finally watched all of them. Uh, let's see, Ming Chen we talked about Ming Na Wen um, from Agents of Shield, I, the show I'm not really honestly a big fan you know, every, of. Every every comic convention that I'm at, she's almost there. Uh, Nolan North, who's big, who's another big voice actor, but he's more like Jennifer Hale, where he's more known for his video game. Like his biggest, probably his thing he's most famous for is he does the voice of Nathan Drake from the Uncharted video game series. Gotcha. gotcha. Uh, Paul Rudd, obviously. Um, 
Ralph Macchio, but I feel like Macchio's there kind of every other year. Like he's there pretty consistently. But it's Ralph um, Macchio. Hmm? But it's Ralph freaking Macchio. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of names on here I don't really like. Uh, Robbie Damon. I, I I know that I know the shows that he's done. I just I don't know him. Um, voice actors. Sean, be- voice actors become that thing where you just go, "Do I really know you or not?" Uh, Summer Glau. You know who that is. Oh yeah, you know who Summer Glau is. So this year alone, I'm going to meet half the cast of Firefly because Summer Glau is here. Like we're going to cover something that has half the cast of Firefly. And Summer Glau is here. I think there's one in Kansas City, and then at VisionCon in Springfield, it's Jewel State, which you've not seen. My Twitter is fucking fantastic today because I, I I did it on Facebook too. The Disney Fox merger is finally completed. Yes, as and of midnight the other night. Actually, midnight last night. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, well, somebody commented on our status. I that always makes me nervous when I see things like that. Uh, but I'm now 100 percent sure that I know Disney owns Firefly. Well, yeah, because that's that's a Fox property, isn't it? Yes, and that means and there's an episode called Shindig. I'm now 100 percent sure that Kaylee is a Disney princess. Yep, I seen that post earlier. And, wow. it's, and it's and it's so true. And then someone uh, commented that Deadpool is now a Disney princess, and I went, I'm okay with that as well. <laughs> uh, Sven Gulli is going to be there. I know Everyone nothing of Sven Gulli. Gu- actually, I don't know who Sven Gulli is. Sven Gulli, for those who may not know, is like, uh, he's mostly a Midwestern personality. He had, is he's kind of like the Midwest answer to Mystery Science Theater 3000. Which started in sorta. Minnesota, which is the Midwest. What's up? Mystery Science Theater started in Minnesota, which is also yeah. the Midwest. I kind of realized how stupid that sounded. Um, I mean, he doesn't comment, doesn't do like the rolling commentary, but like he would present like B horror movies. So almost in it, the same style as, um, oh crap, Elvira. Yeah. So of that, that's an even better comparison to make. He is like the more current version of Elvira. Right on. And it, and he was like, he's something of a local celebrity because, I mean, he's, you know, chi- Chicago based, I believe. Um, but he always like showcased like the worst, like the shittiest movies, but they were always good because like every commercial break before the movie would come back, he would do like a little skit and it was always like super stu- stupid, like, you know, Sight gag humor. Like I he miss had, he those always had things. this bit with the rubber chicken that was really funny. I miss those. So I mean, he's 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 always he's pretty consistently at every con that comes through. So that's it's welcome. Like I love Sven but, but you always have to have local, like a local celebrity, which makes me sad that Paul Rudd is not going to be in Kansas City because Paul Rudd's actually from the area. But um, you know, we talked about the Young Bucks, Tony Schiavone. I think the next uh, we, one, Jai Ahan. Honestly, because we've talked about everyone at this point. Well, no, there's there's still like we did Tress McNeil, Walter Jones, Tyler Hochlin, who you might not know, but he plays Superman on Supergirl. Super, the CW Supergirl which show, is which is coming to an end. Good show. Like you guys should check that out. If also coming to an end. I think the same. Like, I think next year is the end of most of the CW DC shows. Well, Arrow is. No, I th- uh, DC or CW is talking about canceling all of them now. After Arrow really? goes, just killing them all. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I keep the Flash. I think the Flash is really good, but I could see killing like Legends of Tomorrow for sure. Kill that one dead because it's not that great. I'm excited for Batgirl. Ruby Rose is Batgirl. Come on, I'm excited for Batgirl. I'm 100 percent excited for Batgirl or Batwoman. Um, I don't know what it's called. I, it might be Batwoman. I love how when you log on to the C2E2 website and you look up Yaya Han. It has cosplay entrepreneur. Yeah, no, that's great. She's <laughs> she's fantastic. Like, I don't know who she is, but I oh, love that it's Jesus says cosplay entrepreneur. Well, you helped me out with Spinguli. I can help you out with Yaya Han. Yaya Han is probably the most famous cosplayer of all time. Really? Yeah. Who's she, that? Who's that blonde one that everyone seems to like? <laughs> oh God, what's her name? 
Oh, I'll come back. No, I who's that one time. cosplayer in that one costume <laughs> from that one convention? Do you have that one movie with that one guy that I like? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Han. What, what, there's no ice. What do you mean? I gotta drink this coffee hot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Han has her own fabric her le- uh, fabric collection at JoJo or Joe with JoJo. At jo- no, look, I'm not trying to endorse JoJo Siwa, but I kind of enjoy her music and hair bows. Uh, <laughs> uh, Joanne Fabric. She has yeah, yeah. Han has her own fabric line at Joanne mm-hmm. for cosplay. That's how famous uh, Yaya Han is. Well, I mean, I've never really gone to meet the cosplayers, which is probably unfortunate because there's some really fucking I've, good ones. I've met some great cosplayers and I've met some dickheaded cosplayers. Jessica Negri. Oh, she's going to be in Kansas City. She's also a voice on Ruby. Is she? Yeah, which I absolutely it's the only anime show I can get into. I fucking love Ruby. That's the one that I was thinking of, Jessica Negri. Okay, and uh, she she's gonna be playing a Comic Con week after. So I love her. She's usually there every year, though. I she's one of the best people too. She's super sweet. I I will say this: meeting cosplayers is a double edged sword because you get an awesome one, say like Jessica or one of my personal favorites, and I can't think of her name now. I have a I have a picture of her actually signed, which I don't usually do. But she was one of my favorite cosplayers. But when I met her in Kansas City or mm-hmm. Dallas, and I went, "Oh, I have to meet you." She was super nice. She wanted a hug, and I just felt really weird because I'm like, I'm not. I love to give hugs, but like sometimes it's for me. I'm like, I don't want to be that creepy guy. <laughs> that was the first uh, <clears throat> the first time I had ever gone to Wizard World. Uh, Marilyn Gigliotti, who you might know as the girl who sucked 37 dicks <laughs> Which from is, Clarice. Yeah, yeah. She was there, and she had a booth. And this is the first time I had been ever been to a comic convention, ever. And uh, she had a booth. She was promoting like her uh, radio show, because the podcast quite hadn't taken off yet. Um, and she was promoting a radio show, and like I wanted to meet her because I fucking love Clerks. And we sat there and we talked like we didn't. She wasn't just like a fluff conversation to get me to buy something like she sat there and she actually engaged me in, in conversation. And then I, you know, I said to her, like, you know, how much do you charge for like a picture or like an autograph? And she didn't she didn't charge me. She's like, why would I charge you for that? And so I got to hang out and get kind of get to know Marilyn Gigliotti. And she was super fucking sweet the whole fucking time. I, I love her. I, I follow her on Twitter. She's going or on Facebook. She's going through a lot of crap right now. Uh, shout out to you. All the love and positive vibes. Absolutely. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, no, it's still weird uh, to hug people. But yeah, uh, there's another cosplayer. But there's one who cosplays as Spock, who's just an absolute asshole. But Spock himself can kind of come off as an asshole. No, so would, the, wouldn't that be appropriate? Well, kind of, but just the dude himself seems like a dick. Like, he seems like he's... Okay, so what I've heard from other cosplayers, because you get this a lot when you cover mm-hmm. conventions, that you you get told, hey, don't talk to this person from other cosplayers. Jesus. <laughs> and one of the people that I always get told never to talk to is the guy who cosplays as Spock. That's unfortunate. Because he will, like, if you do a podcast interview, he'll charge you for it. Mm -hmm. Almost $100 just to do an interview on a podcast. That's a little insane. And I went, okay, I understand that some people are bigger than we are. Like, I get that 100%. Like, 99% of the population is is probably more well-known than we are. And uh, my Southern twang just came out. I'm liking a porn again. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, no, I get that. But there are just times when you go, I'll, I'll charge you a hundred bucks going, but really? No. <laughs> so yeah, I've been told There's... to stay away from him. I'm never I gonna, see. I'm never going to get to talk to that guy ever. <laughs> so I'm okay with that. Um, so should we, um, should we move to the panels and stuff now? Well, we need to talk about, is are there any good, who's the big comic guest this year at C2E2? Oh, let me pull that up. Hold on a second. Because I don't think I, like, Last year or the year before, I think the big one was, uh, um, the guy, what is his name? The guy who created Deadpool. Oh, crap. Of course, he, you, you would tell, you'd say it, and my mind would just... Rob something? There's a... Okay, so there's one reason we never do comic creators on for covering a convention unless... Oh, my God, George Perez is going to be there. No fucking way. Okay, so... 
there's so many people okay that we could not cover all of the comic creators i'm there's just going way too many yeah i'm just going through here uh if you're a fan of comics and the uh, art that goes into them please go check out every one of the artists that is going to be at c2e2 this weekend dude chris claremont there's a great there's a good list of artists man chris claremont oh my god that's a big one and so many different styles that's what makes me happy so many different styles dude run dmc the daryl dmc is gonna be there his comic's awesome i didn't know he made comics yep there's a i guess that's a fun one for you isn't it that's gonna be fun i gotta go meet him there, um there's a i did not realize there was going to be this many guests <laughs> george perez damn that's huge George Perez and Chris Claremont alone are probably two of the bigger bigger names I'm seeing on this list so far. Like Chris Claremont, uh, if if you're not familiar, like obviously he's mostly famous for the X Men, but his like biggest contribution was like Days of Future Past, which is like one of the biggest X Men stories ever. Fantastic. I mean, my God, they have their own section for literary guest. Holy shit! C two E two bring in the A game this year. Holy crap. Yeah, dude. They're like guns blazing on all fronts, not just the entertainment, but every other one's too. Like there's I'm still I'm still scrolling through the comic creators. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> like good luck. <laughs> Peter Tomasai, who, you know, heads up Superman in action comics. Fucking Rob Liefeld. Liefeld. Rob Liefeld, creator of Deadpool. He's gonna be there this year too. That's fantastic. Dude, this is a murderer's row of like just the some best of the... names and yeah. It's crazy. I'm look I'm still okay, finally got to the end. Yeah, it's it's one of the biggest lists I've ever seen. <laughs> I finally got to the end. The only the, the big downer though is um we didn't really discuss it before jumping over the comic creators. Matt Smith canceled. Matt Smith always cancels. Like it, I know, but I was looking forward to kind of maybe seeing him because he's my favorite doctor. There, there's four things that are perfectly true in life. Death, taxes, and or I guess three things. Death, taxes, and Matt Smith canceling comic convention appearances. <laughs> he's canceled yeah. on Dallas five or six times now. He's canceled on a couple of other cons five or six times. Like I just expect Matt to, to cancel now. Let's see. And that's sad because looking- I really love Matt Smith. Oh, they have a lot of the OG cast from the OG Mortal Kombat game going to yeah. be there. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say the OG. I thought you were talking about that show. I thought like you were they, about- they must be hitting hardcore on Mortal Kombat because Mortal there's Kombat like a 11? bunch of Mortal Kombat I mean, come What's on. Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah. Oh, well, then I guess we should probably dovetail into the panels now. Uh, let's let's talk about some of the panels. Uh, some of the, by the way, Brody's going to be writing all of this because no one else is going to see two E two, but this like no, I can't guarantee. Now, the one thing I do have to kind of preface <laughs> up front: I am working this weekend, like my normal job too. So I'm well, going I mean, to see two E two. As long as you get them up within the next two weeks, you're fine. Oh, I'm going to get or I'm three gonna, weeks. What I'm actually. probably going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my iPad with me, and as I go to the panels and take pictures, I'm going to store everything on my iPad. So the weekend. Like Sunday going into Monday, or maybe even Monday, one of those days I'm going to take off and I'm just going to start punching everything up. Like I'm going to just start writing like crazy and sending you articles. I want to have everything that I'm going to cover out to you at least by ne- the end of next week. Yeah, which is really shitty because Planet Comic Con is next week as well. So it's a lot of comic convention content coming in the next three weeks. Because mm-hmm. this is our kick, uh, your article last night kicked it off, and then this show, and then next week we're doing the Planet Comic Con preview, then we're doing Planet Comic Con, we're doing the live show, and then in May is Vision Con. So, like, the only thing that I really want to try and do live updates on, unless you would reserve it for a different article, I might give you our like, login for Twitter as well. I'll take it if you want to send it to me. Like, what I'm thinking about doing is just posting, like, maybe like the top three cosplays of the day. Like oh, live works. as I see it. Yeah, because honestly, I will tell you, if you don't have a camera camera, mm-hmm. it, it it's a lot of work to get a lot of cosplay photos. I don't have a camera camera. That's what I'm I saying. Mean, you don't have to do cosplay photos for C2E2. 
Well, I don't mind because I have my camera on my phone, which is really, really, really good and high end, and I have like a hundred gigabytes of free space. I mean, if you want to, I'm one hundred percent behind it. No, I'm 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 going to like they're not going to be you know professionally edited photos, but my my goal is to get some cosplay pictures because like I am consistently every year more and more blown away with the level of artistry I see in terms of the cosplay there. And oh, it's not is, even just like you get your part. typical superheroes, you get your typical like your Deadpools and your Harley Quinns and all that, and then you get some like Deadpools and Harley Quinns that kind of mix it up and do something original, but then you get people like there are characters and there are people that do cosplays of characters and things I've never heard of, but I am so in awe of how awesome that they, they do. Like I, every year, one rule of thumb after every comic con before the depression of like, Oh shit, it takes another year before I get to go again hits is every year I say to myself, man, I really wish I could fucking like cosplay on the level that these people do. Like it is insane how good they are at this stuff. There's some great cosplay out there. And I love when you take a character such as well we'll we'll use Harley Quinn as the perfect example where you instead of doing just the typical look of Harley Quinn you combine mm-hmm. Harley Quinn with say 1920s and then you like get flapper year, girl Harley Quinn and it's a fa- it's fantastic perfect example last year when we went to con i saw do you remember the movie a league of their own <sighs> you know I love that you like. It's like, do you have you seen the movie? Well, I hate to. I know. I know it's <laughs> stupid that I keep asking those questions, but you'd be surprised how many people. No, I'll let seen you know. Movies. I'll let you know when I see a movie. But um, but chances are, if there's no crying in baseball, I'm there. I fucking love you. I've never <laughs> loved you more than I do right now. That's one of my favorite uh, all time movies. Harley Quinn cosplay dressed in the, a league of their own baseball uniform that's technically not a cosplay of a league of their own that's actually a cosplay on the um it could be a league of their own but there's also a well, no it, it was for sure was a it? League of their own because it had like the, the the exact like i looked it up okay because the there is also the uh oh the bombshell series no i know exactly what you're about to say but no it was definitely a hundred percent and i even asked it was <laughs> it was a cosplay of a uh, league of their own. I still love cosplay that like the more obscure cosplay mm-hmm. where it's not a huge character, but it's from a fandom of yours where if you see it, you freak out and you chase them down. Like you're running halfway through a convention center. Like, ah! cause I've done that. I twice. gotta take a picture. This is the coolest thing. I, you know, I still think those girls in Kansas city either love me or think I'm the weirdest fuck ever because <laughs> I chased down both. Oh, yeah. I chased down two of them because they were dressed as Inspector Space Time and his companion from the episode of Community. And I, I got remember, it. I think you told me that yeah, story. I got it. And I was it's still probably one of my favorite comic convention stories ever because we talk community for about 15 minutes. <laughs> and that happens every so often. You'll just hit that one fandom where you find somebody like, are you actually this from this? And they say, yeah. And then you just talk about it. Okay, so now I'm going to – I've got this list pulled up of all these panels that I want to go to and see. Are you actually going to be able to walk around the convention floor? <laughs> um, no, at least not for the first day. The first day is probably the busiest day in terms of the panels. That's actually really nice for you if you're going to buy stuff. Well, I usually – I try to typically reserve the buy stuff until like the last couple days once they start maybe – our start doing deals like last year when we went to wizard uh my big get were like a series of green lantern graphic novels like there was a whole like volumes one you through, like fucking nerd <laughs> it's a comic book convention for christ's sake come on i don't think I, i've only bought a comic book once at a comic convention oh every year for the last two or three years I buy, I, I like, I go to hunt down specifically graphic novels and collected comics and such. I, I like actually, I, well, sometimes I'll buy other shit, but I typically will get like the comics. Like last year, I went hunting for volumes one through twelve of this Green Lantern series of the Jeff Johns run of Green Lantern. Um, I didn't, I came up short. I only found the first ten volumes, but I'm still pretty proud of myself. Um, I got the hardcover collected works of. Uh, Dark Knight Three, the um, Frank Miller run, the, his last run on the Batman. I'm Batman. 
I'm Batman. I'm not wearing hockey pads. Um, so, like, I got a lot of cool books. This year, I'm not really on the hunt for anything. Oh, my God, I am. What are you on the hunt for? So, every year, I've come I've come back with something stupid. And uh, 100% stupid. Like, the first convention I went that we covered, I came back with Mal's Pistol from Firefly. Oh, we did. I did. I do want to say we do that, too. Like, we do have... Uh, for our Game of Thrones fans out there, oh, God. Um, we came with a doorstop that says Hodor on it. And if you're a fan of the show, you'll get the joke. That's great. Um, I'm not even a fan of the show, and I get that one. What else is there? Like, we, we've we gotten stupid. Like, my wife got uh, Sirius's black, Sirius Black's uh, wand one year. Yeah, no, that's like some cool a replica. Stuff. So this year... I, I, I always come back with something. Either it's usually prints or stuff because I have an office I want to make super colorful or something to that extent. But this year, I'm going on a mission. Mm-hmm. I am going f- to find the Master Sword and the Hylinian Shield to hang on my wall. That's I feel like that that's there pretty consistently, just very expensive. That's the, I'm going to try to find the least expensive one. Okay. Because la- okay, so that's that's this year's thing because I've got a lightsaber. Which, by the way, the lightsabers at conventions. If you've always wanted a lightsaber, I don't know if C two E two has this, but there's always like that one booth that has a ton of lightsabers you can buy. Oh yeah, they do. That is the best way to buy a lightsaber. Agree. I'm ninety nine percent sure I got a lightsaber for seventy bucks, and it is one of the coolest purchases I've ever had. It, it's a. Uh, it is a Jedi. It's a Jedi blade and a Sith healed, and I'm 100 percent with what I'm fine with that. Hey man, mix and match. It's a beautiful thing. Seventy bucks, and that's the cool part because that to me, because the actual Star Wars lightsaber, the one that is actually Star Wars branded, is mm-hmm. like two hundred and fifty dollars. Jesus Christ! And it does the same thing. Mm-hmm. So. But you can add sound effects and get gla- temp- uh, tempered glass that you can actually fight with for an extra 25 and 30 bucks. I'm going, I should have sprung for it, but I didn't because I got Mal's pistol. That, I feel like, I mean, lightsabers will come and go. Mal's pistol. Yeah, but Mal's is- pistol is on a stand on my uh, dresser right now. Like, I always end up with Funko Pops now. Every time I go to a convention, oh, yeah. I'll end up with like we- two or three of those. Yeah, we got a bunch of those last year too. Like we got, uh, I got one. I got a Twin Peaks, uh, Black Lodge, Agent Cooper, and Laura Palmer pop set. Um, my wife got um, a Battle of the Bastards pop set from Game of Thrones. I know this is out there, and if I can find it, I'm buying it. But I want the Tom Servo pop from Mystery Science Theater. Because I keep looking oh. for the Tom Servo replica at a convention, and no one ever has one. Well, maybe if you're nice to me and I see it. Yeah, no. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. If you see one, let me do That's That's my thing. I, I told you there was something I was going to have you look for. <laughs> Tom Servo pop. Copy yeah. That. I mean, there's a crow pop, too. If you can find that one, I'm 100% sure of it. But I know together on Amazon, they're fucking expensive. Yeah, the, the pops... Um, I usually like last year, like I said, we waited until like the last couple days because that's, you know, when like they tend you to can, deal you with, can, you know, well, make you deals can, with you. A little I mean, more. you can negotiate the first day and you can win sometime. I got the uh, uh, annual number three of the Fantastic Four, the one with Sue Richards and or Sue Storm and the wedding one. I can't think of the name. Reed Richards and Sue Storm's wedding. I got that comment. Mm-hmm. For 35 bucks, with a dude had it for like 110. And we'll be right back with more of the most random show on the internet right after this. This week in Nerd History! During this week in 2016, a statistician filled out his NCAA tournament bracket and was defeated by his wife's aunt. That has been this week. In nerd history. All right, guys, we're back from that commercial break. What a clusterfuck of just happening right there. Uh, so Don't what, you just love technology sometimes? So what just happened? 
Uh, so we go to record this episode of live, and all of a sudden, it tried to remix it and turn it into an R. Kelly song without the piss. Because <laughs> that's exactly because all of a sudden it just stopped recording, and this is the second time this has happened. So I think now it's time for me to update my software or to get new software. Absolutely, I might just uh, uninstall and then re-download. You know, the whole equi- internet computer <laughs> equivalent of turning it on and off again. <laughs> Have you tried turning it off and on again? I use that meme all the fucking time now from the IT crowd. Speaking of which, Facebook went out this past week. It was the greatest thing ever. It was nice. It was nice and quiet on the internet sphere. Like everyone went to all of a sudden, everyone just migrated to Twitter. Like for about 10 minutes, everybody just went to Twitter. But it was so nice not having Facebook for like, what was it? Eight hours that day. I I tried to post comments on stories. It's just like, you cannot post comments now. Well, fuck you too, Facebook. No one likes you. Fuck off. All right, let's do this. Uh, Let's continue our C2E2 preview. I, I yes. don't I don't know what happened. We were recording and then all of a sudden it just kind of bum fucked us. So do you remember bum fights? Oh, I remember bum fights. I don't know why that just hit me after saying bum fucked, but all right, well <laughs> for anybody who does not know, bum fights is where this assholeish rich guy decided to pay homeless people to fight. Like the, it, it was the most terrible thing in the world, but damn those videos were hard. Like it was a car crash. You couldn't turn away. All right. C2E2 panels. What are some of the ones you're looking forward to covering? All right. So let's talk about some of the big ones. Uh, Friday it looks like it's going to be the busiest day. Um, there's one at 1115 on Friday called, and I fully, fully, fully can't wait to go see this. Confession, I binge watch teen flicks. All right. What is it? What's your biggest teen flick? Binge. Oh, it it has to be The Fault in Our Stars for sure. <laughs> Are are you a fan of Lifetime movies? Absolutely not. I call shenanigans. I, I, I have a feeling you're just sitting at home when no one's there, pants off, drinking wild cherry Pepsis, <laughs> snacking on... What kind of snacks do you... I, I see you snacking on some beef-flavored Slim Jims, because they're not really meat. They're just beef flavor. And oh, yeah. Snacking down on some Slim Jims, watching some Lifetime originals. My parents love the Lifetime movies. I unfortunately do not. When I'm by myself and I don't like like my kids not like my kids spending the day with my mom and my wife's at work, I am either playing video games or I'm watching anime. I would have went with the Lifetime movies. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> yeah. It's not that I don't like anime, but I really don't like anime. The only anime I've been able to get in is Ruby. I'm really trying hard. Like that is one facet of nerd culture that I just have not been able to get into, and I'm really making a concerted effort to get into it. This so let's year. see. Ashley has introduced me to one where there's a killing smiley face. Where I'm like, I don't want to see Walmart destroy people anymore. Uh, there was another. Uh, uh, Sharon introduced me to Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop's awesome. I don't hate Cowboy Bebop. I think it's almost like Firefly, but I just can't get into the. I just can't get into it. Uh, I did. Is it the art style? Uh, kind of. I just. I'm not a big fan of subtitles either. Gotcha. It's not. It's not that. It's just. If I have to, there's times where I just want something on in the background. That's kind of when I binge. Is when I just put stuff on in the background. Because mm-hmm. right now I'm binging the Good Place. That's a good ass show. Oh my god, that show's so good. <laughs> I hate Ted Danson, and then I I watch this and I go, I don't hate Ted Danson as much anymore. It's Veronica Mars. She makes the show. <laughs> I'm glad you just called it. It's Veronica Mars. <laughs> I mean, you people can say like, oh, she's from Frozen. I'm like, she will forever be the girl from Veronica Mars for me. She will be Veronica Mars, not the girl from Veronica Mars. She, she is, Veronica is Veronica Mars. Mars. Oh, my God. Uh, I um, I love Kristen Bell. The So that's the... What, say, go ahead. Oh, I don't know where I was going with this. I, uh, no movies. I was going coming back around to something. Uh, chick flicks, uh, teen movies. Teen flicks. Uh, what, what? Like some of the ones they're going to be talking about are uh, Clueless, obviously. Um, uh, all the yeah. boys I've loved before. They're going to talk about 13 Reasons Why. They're going to talk about Riverdale, Breakfast Club. I tried 13 Reasons Why and I couldn't get into it. My wife watched the first season and... Um, I mean, I'm always on board for a good Netflix series. Like, I feel like they're really crushing it with their original series. That's just one I never got into. I need to try Riverdale. 
I, I, Riverdale's so good. I love it. I need to. I watched. I remember watching the trailer for it, going, "I kind of want to see this." I watched one episode and went, "Yeah, it's the it's the kid from the Sweet Life of Zach and Cody." Okay, it is, but it's like it's the CW teeny bobber version of Twin Peaks. It really is. You know who I want to make a video game? By the way, David who? fucking Lynch. Oh my god, that'd be the most unplayable video game ever made. <laughs> I was sitting there thinking about that the other day. How great would it be to have a David Lynch video game? I would love it. I would absolutely love it. But it would honestly, and I love David Lynch. I I worship at the altar of David Lynch. It would be the most unplayable video game ever made. I don't know how you. Play. I'm sorry. There's some video games that are barely un- barely playable now. Like, but I'm- they're but they're because they're shitty games. Like it would be a good game, but David Lynch does not traffic in linear storytelling, and you need linear Katamari storytelling. Damasi. If David Lynch were to create a game, I feel like it would be Katamari Damasi. <laughs> Love that game, by the way. Okay, so we're we're off. Let's let's talk. Uh, so panels, panels. Well, Teen Flex. I, I got to tell you, my favorite one, like those '90s ones, man. We're never been kissed. She's all that. I love never. Ten been things kissed. I hate about you. Yes. Like that was the golden era of Teen Flex. Like there's some good ones coming out now. Like, you know, Fault in Our Stars. Uh, if you, have you seen Paper Towns? No, but I'm going to. Pa- Paper Towns is very good. I highly recommend it. It's from but, the same author, um, but it's like a different kind of teen flick. It's very good. It's not like about the romance. It's actually kind of like a teen flick mystery in a way. Uh, very highly recommended. I want to see that. Like, I, there's, But the 90s ones are just so good. Oh, you can't replace those. Clue, like you said, ten the things ni- I hate the about 80s you. The eighties and the nineties got the teen movie correct because in the eighties, the late eighties and late nineties, let's just say that even because Clueless is like the only one that came out in ninety four. But the late eighties with the Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink, um, Sixteen Candles, Saint Elmo's Fire, Weird Science, all the John Hughes but- movies, all the John Hughes movies. Mm-hmm. The camp you can't you cannot talk about eighties teen flicks without talking about say anything. No, it's a great movie too. Great movie. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Mm-hmm. And then the nineties come along with She's All That, Never Been Kissed. Uh Can't Hard is it Can't Hard Can't Hardly Wait. Can't Hardly Wait, yeah, that was nineties. Uh there's another one. Like there's so many, so many good teen movies. Cruel Attentions. There's so many great teen movies from the 90s and the 80s. And then all of a sudden, the 2000s just kind of dropped the ball. Just yeah, they, I mean, there's there's like the 2000s. There's some good ones. A Walk to Remember is great. That's a, that's a great movie. But outside that, I can't tell you another teen movie from 2000, from the 2000s. Well, I mean, The Fallen Our Stars is 2000s. No, that came out in the, that's come out in the last, since 2010, yes. But that's still technically no. 2000s. I'm talking about from 2000 to 2010. Like oh, I'm talking okay. About, well, then I, yeah, no. The 2000, the early 2000s definitely dropped the ball. There's just I don't know what happened. I I don't know what happened in that time frame. But hey, it is what it is. Um. Okay. Back to panels. Yes, uh, more panels. Uh, another big one is the making of Mortal Kombat 11. The NetherRealm Studios will be there showing off gameplay footage, demos, that sort of thing. So I'm kind of very excited to go see that. Okay, so who's your go-to character in Mortal Kombat? Well, in the latest Mortal Kombat game, I find that I am best suited while using Sonya Blade, but I typically will go Sub-Zero. I think that's everyone's typically. Sub-Zero, um, Reptile, and uh, Scorpion just seem to be the three that everyone gravitates I to. Never, like, I love Scorpion as a character, but I find him... Get over here, him- Paul! Other than the spear move, I don't think he's a very playable character. I enjoy, I enjoyed Striker, but like it is the most basic character in the history of Mortal Kombat. Really? Because Johnny Cage is pretty fucking basic. But Johnny Cage is an original. Striker okay. was created later on in the run. Striker was created for Mortal Kombat Three. He's just a cop who throws grenades. Yeah. Well, then you could say that about Jax. Jax is just a cop with metal arms. <laughs> Jax, uh, I I do I do enjoy playing as Smoke. Still, like I said, I, I think one of my favorite fatalities ever is when he just blows up the world. Like that's yeah. that's that's the way it's done. All right, who, agreed. I like Smoke. 
Um, then after that, um, let's see, the next big one is uh, the uh, Animaniacs voice cast reunion. Like, how do you not go to that? Jess Hartnell dresses really, really strange. He dresses like a rock star, and he's 100% one. That's all I'm going to say. I love Jess Hartnell. He, he absolutely is worth it. He That man can has got a direct line to my childhood with all the voice acting he's done, so I he can dress however the they're fuck doing he wants. This, they're doing the Animaniacs concert, but I think that's a uh, like a ticket you have to buy separately. Yeah, that's a separately ticketed event. That would be so worth it, though, to hear uh, Rob Paulson sing the the country song. Would Agreed. it not? Yeah, that, that's that's worth the whatever. The I, it's probably like twenty five fifty bucks, but it's probably worth it just to hear him sing that live. Um, let's see what else is going on that Friday. Uh, there's a panel that I want to go see called uh, "Movies Everyone Disagrees with You On," hosted by the uh, Cinema Snob from Cinema Sins and the Nostalgia Critic. Isn't the Nostalgia Critic on a couple of episodes of Cinemassacre stuff? Yeah, I think he's done a couple of the uh, video, maybe the video rental ones. I'm not sure. I know that they work. They often work hand in hand. I've always wanted to meet Cinemassacre. I, I like James in particular. So if I ever put on another convention, that's one of those that I might try to go after and be like, "Look, we want you to be at our convention." fucking james rolfe man i would kill to meet james rolfe um so that's a good one uh lloyd kaufman's doing a panel where he talks about trauma's latest films <sighs> lloyd kaufman is a man after my own heart dude's weird as shit yes he makes he's weird as shit and he makes the shittiest movies but in the best way possible 100 percent acceptable um let's see what else we got here um, and then to close out Friday, there's a Chicago Ghosts and Gangsters, a look at the Windy City's real life haunted crime scenes and how audio drama is created, including pizza pies. Thank you. I'm glad you added that. Thank you. <laughs> I still can't believe you actually said pizza pie. Like I still to this moment of this recording of this episode, we've had to redo like 25 minutes of this episode or 30. Mm-hmm. And I still can't get over the fact you fucking said pizza pie. Pizza pie. In the rec- in the beginning of the show, uh, I gotta leave a mark somehow, right? No, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so that one's a good. So that that's it for Friday, uh, Saturday. A uh, couple big ones I'm going to be going to see. Uh, uh, there's the 40th anniversary Alien panel where they talk about the 40th anniversary of the film, and then they debut uh, four new fan made shorts that exist in the Alien universe. Fan made shorts are the greatest thing in the history of man. There are some of the some of the best uh, nerd content comes out of fan films, so I'm super excited to go. See I that have one. been toying, and, and and this is one of the like live is this very raw show at times. Like it's sometimes it's structured, sometimes it's raw. You never know what we're going to talk about tonight. Today it just happens to be one of those episodes where it's really raw. Mm-hmm. I have been toying with the idea of writing fan fiction or doing fan fiction for the website, and I don't know if it would go over well or not. But I also have it's an interesting avenue to look into because I also, after doing the conspiracy theory that Mario is actually the bad guy, it's super that would be a perfect fan fiction to start with. Well, I have another one. Oh, no, yeah, no, this is this is where I can absolutely trace thing from uh the Adams family. Mm -hmm. I do believe thing is Luke Skywalker's hand. Mind blown. I, I almost did. I, I, I have two. And then there was another one where I was like, it could be David Tennant's hand. No, I like the Luke Skywalker hand. But I, I actually was able to construct the circle better with Luke Skywalker's hand. And I went, okay, then I can make this actually happen. Dude, people would eat that shit up. So that's my next. That is a conspiracy theory that I am debuting at Planet Comic Con for our live edition of Live. Oh my god, I wish I was there to fucking listen to that. Because after the Mario one, I, I, I've gotten emails going, when's the next one? Uh, and live. Uh, it's going to be a play at a Comic-Con. It will be videoed so you can see it. <laughs> so that that is coming. But yeah, I'm thinking about writing them now too. Um, let's see. There's uh, The biggest one on Saturday has to Clu- be... 
Is it clueless? clueless? Yeah. The clueless reunion panel. And all four of them, Alicia, Brecken, Donald, and Paul Rudd are all going to be there. Like that is the most scheduled panel. Oh, that's going to be the hardest. That's so going to be the hardest panel to get into. I don't know how big the room is at C2E2. It's the biggest room. It's the main hall. So it's biggest. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get into that panel, but I'm going to try. If the line is super long, I would still I, try. I, I, I would try to get there as early as possible. That's how that normally goes. That's going to be a crazy um, panel, though. That's going to be worth it. That's going to be worth it alone. So I'm going to try. I can't make any promises, but I'm going to get in line, and we're going to see what we can make happen for that. I was going to say, even if you have to go on Sunday's panel, if you don't have anything else going at that time. Oh, well, no. Sunday, if I can't get into the one on uh, Saturday, I'm definitely going to the one Oh, on my Sunday. God. Shut the front door. What? So Vision Con. Uh-oh. I thought you were going to tell me the program just failed on us again. No, 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 no. So, no. Vision Con just made an announcement for somebody who's going to be at their convention. Why am I this fucking excited about this? Uh, coming to Vision Con, <laughs> uh, Corporal James Craigmile of the Green County Police or Green County Sheriff's Office. And why that's super exciting for me is I'm a fucking live PD junkie. Uh huh. I have a live PD fantasy team. Like police department? Yeah. Like Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm confused right now. How Elaborate, does that work? Please. Uh live P okay, so during live PD, I'm in a group with like six other people. And mm -hmm. every week or seven or eight, depending on how many uh stations there are or police departments there are on each episode, each person in this league gets a department. If their department solves this crime or tries it like so if a officer in your department pulls over someone for speeding and they arrest the person, it's five points. If we have this Jesus. We have this very elaborate list. If you end up arresting a murderer, it's 150 points. This sounds like the most elaborate fantasy league ever. It is. Uh, right now I'm in second because Green County went on a break because I would always try to get Green County every week. So how do you do you just listen to uh, like police scanners? And no, such? we watch live PD on A&E. Oh, so it's a show. It's a show. Yeah, it's better than cops because it's in real time. They follow seven different police or seven or eight different departments every week for two days, three hours every Friday and Saturday night. And it, huh. Vision Con just announced from the Green County Sheriff's Department, Corporal James Craigmile and his dog, Lore. And you have to know that if there's going to be a live PD situation happening at this convention, and we're covering it, I'm going to try everything I can to get an interview with someone from live PD. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, that... I don't know that show. Um, you need to watch that show. You need to watch that show. Yeah, no, I'm in a live PD fantasy league. That's right. legit. in a show that's been talking about video games and science fiction. That's just about the nerdiest thing I think I've heard you say. Oh God, yeah, no, this I live PD is. I will stop everything I'm doing for three hours on Friday and Saturday night. I won't even go out on Friday nights anymore because of live PD. Like, I mean, I will, but you know what I'm saying. They're most no, of the I time, I get, I, most of the yeah. time, I'm not leaving the house. Now I've got a D, now I'm, now I'm DVRing it and I won't miss it. But still, when I didn't have a DV or didn't have enough room on my DVR, or I was using a service that the DVR could only hold one episode of something. Jesus. I, Talk about the Stone Age. Yeah, no. This, this the internet one, though. Uh, I'm a firm believer in Philo. If you haven't signed up for Philo, do so right now. You can get almost 45 channels for $16 a month. And <laughs> yeah, Live PD is one of those channel or Live PD is one of those shows that I will watch every week religiously. So right on. announce for Vision Con. Okay, back to panels. Sorry. Uh, no, you're fine. Um, so the Clueless panel, um, there's one that you actually recommended I go see. Um, uh, do, 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 Twisted Tunes, yes. National Lampoon's Vacation. Every time, every time those guys get together and they read a script from a movie as their character voices, you need to be there. 
So, and I love Vacation. I love that whole series. That's so, like, a, that's, it's one of my favorite win. movie series ever. I do think Christmas Vacation is my favorite. I think European Vacation is my favorite. I love European Vacation, but it's for so many different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> Look, kids, Big Ben Parliament. Look, kids, Big Ben Parliament. Every time I go uh, around a roundabout, I yell that without just thinking now. I'm that asshole, mm-hmm. aren't I? Um, then the last, uh, there's two more big ones. There's the John Barrowman spotlight. John Barrowman brought down an entire stage in Kansas city. If he's at your convention, you need to be at that panel. I'll send you the link to that. I'll post the link too. It's act. it's fun. You have to, as soon as we're done, I got to see that. I think that's what actually crashed the thing. The last time was, I was looking that up. <laughs> um, and then the last, I mean, the last big one is AMC's, uh, premiering the nos for a2 which is spelled nos for a2 uh special screening uh joe hill wrote a book um it's uh, joe hill if you don't know is stephen king's son and they're uh it's the newest like amc acquisition props this, to him know. for not using his dad's last writing last r- name as a writer well, you know, I mean, if your dad is one of the most famous authors in the world and you want to make your name for yourself in the writing field, you I, have to, I would. You have to use your own. You have to use a name you come up with. You can't go like, I'm David King. <laughs> yeah, because you're never going to get make your make your own career if you don't make your own name. Like you'll like have you, some fans, but it just wouldn't be the same. Right. So there's they're doing a screening for his new show based off of his book, which I'm That's super awesome. excited about. Congrats. Um. And then that's it for uh, Sunday or Saturday. Sunday's a little bit low key. There's only really three big ones. There's the David Tennant spotlight. Yeah, obviously. that's really low key. You know, it well, looks I mean, good in terms of like, there's not as many panels. You know, it looks really good with him. Is it good? Owens? I, I keep seeing that mentioned and I have yet to watch the trailer for that. Amazon Prime. I think it starts in May. Looks Amazon Prime's got some really good shit. Man. Yeah, it looks amazing. Um, so there's the David Tennant spotlight. Um, if I don't make it to the cast uh, clueless reunion on Saturday, they're doing another one on Sunday, which doesn't have nearly as many scheduled. Well, it just doesn't <laughs> have Paul Rudd. That's the problem. Paul Rudd's yeah. not going to be there. Everybody wants to see Paul Rudd. Um, and then there's another Animaniacs uh, panel, but this time including Maurice LaMarche okay those guys alone i'm telling you if they are ever at another convention i i'm not one of those okay so there's one thing we talked about this in our previous try at this so we'll do it again i know when i first started going to conventions going to panels was never a big thing yes me same here i was never really super into that that was until adam west sat down next to me and told me i was a kind citizen and that it, is like one of the nerd moments ever to have. Like I would never be able to live and live that down. I honest to God, what that was one of the only few times that when a celebrity passed away, I cried was when Adam West passed because I remember that story so much that it's still, it, it, it's just my favorite comic convention story ever. But that being said, after that, I decided let's make panels a big part of the convention, and it just adds to the overall experience because there are times, and I don't know if you'll understand. I don't know how many panels you've been to, but there are times where uh, a few conventions become very monotonous. If you're just on the floor walking around and that's all you do, it becomes boring. It does. Like there's like cool shit to look at, but by the second day, you've pretty much seen all of what. The it takes floor in a big conven- at a big convention. It'll take you two days to walk around an entire floor. No matter what, it'll take you two days because yes. you will miss stuff. But after the second day, if you've got a three day pass, you have to like mix it up with something else. That's why I love the fact of panels being part of conventions. It adds a nice little bit of extra flavor, and you're not just seeing the same vendors. In the same booth over I, and over I and over it, again. I think it's the addition of, hey, this is for the fans. Let's make something awesome for the fans. So I, I recommend doing as many panels as possible. I'm like I these and like I was uh, saying throughout. Um, that I'm not going to make it to every one of these panels. Like there's and there's plenty of other panels that I've earmarked that we haven't talked about that I that I'm interested in. These are your main I'm, ones. 
these are the the big ones that I'm going to go to, whether it's for like, you know, I think this would be good on the website, like it'd be good viewership or something that sparks my interest. Um, I, again, I, and another thing I have to consider is I have a child that I'm going to have with me. My baby's coming to the convention with me. So, and my wife's going to be there. So when I go, she's obviously going to go off and do her own thing. When I go to some of these panels, she's not going to want to go to every one of them. Um, so there's going to be time constraints. Also, I need to reiterate at the beginning, I am also working this weekend. I work an overnight job, so I'm not like you, gonna, sir, the, are a crazy bastard for doing that as well. <laughs> well, I just can't. It, shit's well, I get expensive, you. No, man. I get I just you. I cannot get afford you. to take the whole weekend. Like, if, I might take one or two. I still owe you off. seventy bucks. <laughs> I'm just going to yeah. say that on air so I remember it. <laughs> Um, I didn't want to be like that asshole who constantly reminds you like, Hey, no, it's not that. It's just like life has been so hectic. I think you get this too. Life has just been hectic where I go, Oh shit, because we're planning for Kansas city and everything around here has been nuts. So it happens. I'll get that to you. Um, but there are like, there's plenty of other panels that I haven't mentioned that I'm super excited about. So, I mean, again, I'm not going to, depending on the time constraints, like cause some of these panels are later in the day and I don't live very close to the convention center. So, I mean, I'm going to get, I'm going to, my big thing is I'm going to cover as much content as I can. You know, there are some that I'm going to hit regardless. And then there are some that might have to, you know, drop by the wayside. Uh, but my goal is to try and get to as many panels as I can. I'm definitely going to go to the big ones, like the clueless, the David Tennant, the, you know, the Twisted Tunes. I think, I even think, I'm looking at this now, I even think Verve is having a panel there this year. Which we talked about just a few minutes ago, or on the yeah. other one. Let me tell you something. I think, if you have nine ninety nine and you're willing to spend $10 a month, you should you should get Verve because you get Crunchyroll, Funimation, Rooster Teeth, Nick Splat, the Harmon Channel, whatever, uh, Nerdist. Like just, just for the Crunchyroll, the Funimation, and the Shutter alone is and worth Shutter, it. And then yeah. you get all that extra other stuff, too. It's just, it's Nick, worth it. Nick Splat, by the way, has every episode of Rocco's Modern Life. Hey, the dude, only, and ha- salute your shorts. The only reason that I'm trepidatious to do it is because there's, like, so many other streaming services coming out. Like, I'm still waiting for Disney Plus to hit. Disney Plus? Have you seen the rumor of how much Disney Plus is supposed to be? No. What's seven ninety nine. Seven ninety nine? Yeah. For all that content? Yeah. <laughs> take my money. Take it. Take it all now. Like Disney Disney's gonna win. That's all I'm gonna say. Netflix is gonna have some competition. Uh is there anything else we want to talk about for C T V two before there's a couple of other things I want to get to before we end this show. Um no. I mean like I'm gonna like I said, I'll kinda I'm gonna get to as many of these panels as I can. Um, in terms of starting to get the content to the site, I'm probably going to wait till that Monday to start actually writing. Well, stuff you have up you just, have time because you know, planet. There's going to be a ton of people coming in, an influx of readers coming in all at once in the next two weeks. So, I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to get that stuff out as soon as I can. Um, I would I would try to write articles as I go to the convention, but because I'm going to be going to work most of the weekend, it's going to be a little bit hard for me to do that. Um, so, I mean, I'm excited. Some of those panels sound really fun. I'm excited to see, like, the cosplay. The cosplay is always the biggest one for me. The one thing that I look forward to every year, it's not a con unless Kato Caitlin is there. And every Wait, year, what? Ed, every fucking year, I'm not kidding you, every year for the last four years, whether it's been C2E2 or Wizard World, Kato Caitlin has been there. He's not on the guest list, though. No, he's not. He never is on the guest list. He's just there, like wandering like, around, or well, no, like when you walk into the like the entrance, like the dude like from this... the O.J. Simpson trial, the former yes, house Jack guest. For... What the fuck is he? What the fuck does he do? So, like, there's the entrance <laughs> that separates the two different halls, right. and where everyone kind of meets, and there's like a little stage. Where there's like sometimes there's a DJ, sometimes there's like a live band. Wah, wah, wah. Kato Kate. <laughs> Sorry, you what? said DJ. I had to make that want 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 sound. Watch. I don't know the sound. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Like the DJ horn, the. Wah, 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 wah. I'll, wah, wah, wah. I'll try to find it. Yeah, we sound like idiots, right? Now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like what? Uh, Someone Kato, just listening. Kato like Caitlin is there at, at that entrance, and he's always hosting some kind of thing, and he's never on the guest list, but he's always just there. That's the one. That's the well, 
That's a sound. So, um, it's Kato not fucking as... Kalen. All right. Well, I don't just know one why those... he's there, but cool, I, man. I guess if you enjoyed the OJ Simpson trial in the 90s, because, I mean, that was a huge thing. I guess you could be a true crime nerd for that, because, I mean, I love true crime stuff. I just, oh, God, what just happened? Uh, I just played the, it played again. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there's, and there's going to be plenty of other stuff that's going to happen throughout the weekend that they don't necessarily advertise uh, on the app. But Kato um, Kalen just randomly is at a convention. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, they do karaoke contests and stuff. So there's going to be plenty of fun stuff. Oh, my God. Um, I'm going to do – my goal is to, like, you know, ed, stay tuned to the Facebook page, guys, because I'm – Yeah, he's going to have our – he's going to have Facebook and Twitter. You're going to have Twitter privileges. Don't fuck that up. I'm going to be like RuPaul here, and don't fuck it up. Oh, I won't. <laughs> um, I don't care. I'm going to be updating the Twitter and Facebook throughout the weekend with different cosplay pictures and, and stuff like pictures that. Pictures of so himself, selfies of himself, just like – Look at me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if that'll be get, fun. Are you going to get brave uh, enough to do a live video? No. We'll, we'll <laughs> see. We'll see. We'll see. I had to ask. I mean, it's a fair we'll question. See. It's a fair question. I have to figure out how to do live. I still don't know how to do live videos. Uh, you click the live video button. <laughs> no. Well. Oh. You just made me feel like an idiot. Thank Thanks. you. And good, <laughs> thank you. And good night, everybody. Okay. So. <laughs> Um, a, so I uh, I'm gonna you know update the social medias with like live cosplay. I know before you would do actual articles, but I think it's just easier and less time consuming. Well, for just, you, yeah, yeah. For us, we uh, actually to update them anytime I that mean, I'm at a convention. We're gonna do that. Unless you'd prefer me to just group all the pictures and send them to you. I mean, I could do that. <sighs> no, you know what? Post them to post them to Facebook. We'll tag C2E2. It'll be a lot easier because I because okay. what I'll end up what I normally do if we're like because you're not actually. I mean, you're covering the convention for us, but you don't have the press badgy. Uh, is that how it's pronounced? B a d g e? Is it badgy? Is it? Is I that... think you get, yeah. Yeah, we'll go. We'll, we'll, we'll run with it. Uh, usually with that, I like to put them on the website and make people go there first. But mm -hmm. being that you're going to have so much stuff to write, <laughs> this would be it'd be immense. It's not like four of us going to a convention. It's just you. Hey, it's just like I was back in the day. By the way, <laughs> and the, the other, and if any of my. Uh, fans i guess you could say who all read my one stuff of them on the, yeah yeah all one of them <laughs> thanks mom uh who who read my articles know that my articles are not short they're very long i tend to type no less is this a chicago two. by the way is this a chicago thing is it does amanda do the same thing yeah no like you guys' articles are the two longest of anybody who writes and our editor <laughs> i will send them hey like you got a new article to edit and I probably, I'm not, I think everybody knows who our editor is because she gets paid by a publishing company as well so, mm -hmm. to edit. And I'll be like, hey, you got a new thing to edit. And she'll be like, okay, who's it from? And I'll tell them it's either you or Amanda. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, there goes an hour of my night. <laughs> <laughs> because they're always two to 3,000 words. Yeah, mine are absurdly long. So if I'm going to do articles on the It's not a bad thing at all. I actually prefer. Things. More, I, we get more ads from Google than we do in longer articles. I'm more happy with long articles. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I figured just I'll just update them. Like, I'll take pictures throughout the day, and then at the end of the night, I'll just I'll upload all the pictures I've taken. Like, I'll do, you I, know, if and throughout the day, if I see something cool, I'll post it. Like, I'll do, like, live updates, like live tweeting. I, I swear to God, that, if I'm I see of. one photo of your foot, me and you are going to fight. <laughs> <laughs> this is me going to the bathroom. Hi. Like all of a sudden, it's just a picture randomly of the floor. Like look I don't know what happened. <laughs> look at this totally awesome urinal cake. This concrete looks pretty. Okay, so there's a couple of huge stories that broke yesterday, and I did not know this until someone tweeted at me this morning. All right, let's do it. Number one is video game news. Ooh, let's hear it. Number one, Google has officially put their name in the console race. I literally just heard about this right before we went There's a lot of live. problems with it, though. My God, there's a lot of problems with I it. I haven't heard anything other than they're releasing their own console. It's called the Google Stadia or Stadia or Stevia or I don't know how. It, 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 that, or it, Stadium Arcadium. S-T-A-D-I-A. 
Stadia, uh, whatever. It's Here's stupid. It okay. So the stupid. controller looks like a pro controller for the Switch. Had a love child with the Xbox controller. Okay. The biggest issue I have with this, though, is it's going to let you play games, but the only way you can play them is via internet connection. They will stream much like Netflix. That's dangerous because if you stream, like, you know, games, that's not a good idea. Like, and I know that there's rumors floating around that PlayStation and Xbox are considering going <clears throat> all, all digital, too. Well, this is the biggest complaint that people have with this system. It's if you go digital, digital is good if you can just download the game onto your system and just play it. But you have to play but it with it, Wi-Fi. You can't play it without. And I'm going. A lot of people like to take games with them. Absolutely, absolutely. Like <clears throat> that's the Nintendo Switch's bread and butter is taking it on the go. I mean, you can take a PlayStation and Xbox with you, but you can still play them when you get somewhere. Right. If there's no internet, you're, you're fucked. fucked. Yeah. I don't like, like this. I, I think this is a stupid idea. And I know a lot of <clears throat> games have online components, but they still have offline components. Like you you can still play the game offline. This is dumb because then, then take take all that out of consideration. Apparently there's no console needed to play this. It's going to be like the Google, um, oh, what's it called? Their, their TV function thing. The Google Chromecast? Yeah, it'll be like Chromecast. And not to mention how much this is going to charge people because, like, streaming is expensive. But when you're streaming, like, you know, and it's it takes, like, up to, like, three or four gigabytes to stream a movie, just a two-hour movie. Imagine sitting there playing, like, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time for, like, eight hours on end, s- streaming it the entire time. Your fucking internet no, bill is going to go through the No roof. matter how good your internet is, you can't tell me that it's not going to be this just absolutely horrible thing when a game starts to lag. Oh my god, this this idea sounds like the biggest bowl of microwaved assholes I've ever seen. Hashtag microwaved assholes. They pop when you cook them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't like this idea. Google fucked up. The other story is, is that I, I can't wait to talk about this. Ooh. Konami made a huge announcement yesterday. Konami? Okay. Konami's anniversary is coming up, and they are going to be releasing three anniversary sets. Okay. Uh, for anybody who does not know, Konami's been around the video game. 50th anniversary is coming up. Yeah. 5 0? Yeah, that's a long time. I didn't realize that, that they had been around that long. Yeah, Konami is a gaming institution. Uh, there is the first up is the arcade classics, which okay. is going to comprise Haunted Castle, Ooh. Ajax, Gradius, Gradius Two, Life Force, Thundercross, Scramble, and Twin B <clears throat> for okay. twenty bucks, and it comes out, and it's going to go. It's going to be all digital sale. Uh, okay. You can get this on the Nintendo Switch stream the Xbox One, and the PlayStation 4. That's not bad. How much did you say that was going to be? 20 bucks. Not a bad deal. Now, the second one is the Contra Anniversary co- Collection. Oh, oh, oh. It's going to be an eight-game collection. And so far confirmed is Contra, Super Contra, Super C, and Contra 3. And each of these will come with a digital book as well. Okay. Now, the, there's still one more. And this is the one that made me fangirl so hard, I had to get a towel. For this third one? Do you remember the one thing I said I have been dying to play the entire time? Uh, wasn't it one of the old the retro games? Yes. Uh, Galaga? No, 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 not that retro. It's on. What was the one NES title that I said I cannot wait for it to? Oh fuck! Oh, that's gonna hurt. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to the episode again. I don't know what was it. The Castlevania Anniversary Collection has been announced. <gasps> confirmed. There's gonna be eight games. Uh huh. So Did far, they confirm all the titles. So they've got four. They've confirmed four so far. And the four Which they've four? announced is Castlevania, mm-hmm. Castlevania 2, Belmont's Revenge on the Game Boy, 
Ooh. Castlevania 3 for the NES and Super Castlevania 4 for the Super. Oh my god. And I went, there's just, 20 bucks that I'm going to be spending this summer. I don't even give a shit. They have to include Symphony of the Night. That was one of the That's best one best of the ones games. everyone's saying that they're hoping that one's in there. I'm kind of surprised Simon's Quest is not one of the eight at this point. I'm kind of not surprised. That game sucks. Well, I know the game's terrible, but still, it's Castlevania. I, I'm super stoked for this collection, though. Like, this is the of, time. For of it. the three, like, I'm super excited about Contra. But that one sounds fucking awesome. Yeah, Contra and Castlevania just kind of blew my mind when I read that. I went, oh, So long as they don't include the Nintendo 64 Castlevania games, those were shit. Everybody said, uh, someone said they might include the DS games. That's different. The Nintendo 64 Castlevania games are absolute shit on a stick. I'll throw out one that uh, no one would expect me to say. What's Uh, that? I know there's a Castlevania game for the Sega Genesis. Is there? Yeah. I am not aware of this. What about that one? Why not? I mean, if this if you're going to make this bundle, you know, include like some of the fan favorites, but throw in some of the ones that people don't necessarily know. Like I know I didn't know there was a Castlevania game for the Sega Genesis until I, I was watching Cinemassacre it. and they played it. Now I want to go back and rewatch all the angry video game nerd videos <clears throat> from the beginning. This, Thanks, I think buddy. this was a James and Mike episode actually. I know, but it's been like every year I go through these files where I watch all, all through all episodes. I gotta get them. I I know you can contact them, and they take forever to answer an email. But I might either try to contact James Rolf or Mike Matei. Uh, I I don't I don't know why, but I just I like Mike. Mike just rubs me the wrong way sometimes. (laughs) I like Mike. I like the entire grouping they have there. They have a great group, but Mike just seems very pompous in some of the videos sometimes i think but i'm okay with that like it's not like a bad thing it's not no i i'm not and i'm not speaking to his character like i'm sure he's probably a really rad dude and i would love to meet him just as much as i'd love to meet james it's just like in more particular like when they did the james and mike monday on resident evil 2 he's just like oh i didn't play these games these games escape like he sounded very like they were beneath him and maybe it's just a character he's playing. Maybe it isn't. I, well, don't I didn't know, feel that, that at all. I just felt like he was just went. I didn't play him at all. No, no. Maybe it's just me. Then I could be interpreting that wrong. Maybe you were having a bad day. It could have been. And maybe I'm just overprotective of the Resident Evil franchise. I don't know. Oh no! I will. If I sat here and said, "Hey, Resident Evil sucks," I'd I'd reach through the phone and grab your dick through your asshole and shove it down your dog's butt. I was going to say, don't threaten me with a good time until you said dog's butt. <laughs> Cause <I'm, laughs> I don't want to really end up in a kind of Shane. Struggling. I just don't want to end up in a Shane Dawson situation. <laughs> Love that guy though. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's the nerd news right now. Cool. Uh, uh, so, I mean, to kind of wrap it all up, uh, I'm really excited about going to C2V2 this year. I wish I could go to like you know conventions all the time because like that's my favorite time of year. Um, my least favorite time of year is the day after. Uh, oh my the god! Final day. Of Let's the talk con. about that. There is a drag that happens to the human body. I don't know if this is just events because I I got I find out that after a convention you just kind of go into like a shell of sadness. Mode, kind of. I call it a shell of sadness. It is absolutely true. Like that final day of the con is fun, but it's sad because you realize like as the hours are ticking away, we have to, so you have to are, go back to normality. Right. And, and there's an, there's a weird physical reaction too. like, I don't actually get back to my normal equilibrium until like many days later after the con. Ends yeah. I always take spend, a day to recover from a convention. Like you have to like, like, this whole week, like my energy is building and building and building, and I'm getting more and more amped. And then Sunday happens, like too. Sunday night happens, and he Brody will just be asleep on a couch. Just yeah, I'll be like asleep with my hand in a bucket of fried chicken and a half, you know, drunk Terry Pepsi. Like, where did my life go? You're one and step like, away from Al Bundy. One like step other... away. Good God. Were you a were you a high school football <laughs> star who sold shoes? I, I don't even know how to handle this right now. Uh, that, hey, that show was set in Chicago. So yeah, no, that that's pretty accurate. 
Yeah, you're not wrong. Um, but there is this weird like come down where physically you need like a day to like because you you know you get so amped <clears throat> up and then that last day it's just like you just have nothing to give. So fun. And, s- go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. I'm sorry. And then there's just that like that malaise that kind of sets in where. You know, the next the next con, the next big one doesn't come until towards the end of the year with Wizard World. And like there's other cons in between, like smaller ones. But, you know, being a father and having a full work schedule, like I just don't have the time to get to all. Of them. You just like, there's, there's some conventions you never get the same high from. Like there's a reason no. we play like, Cam. There's, there's a reason we pick going to Planet Comic Con every year in Fan Expo Dallas, because there's just a high from those two and, conventions. Like there's one, there's like a couple conventions I'd like to cover for the site. Like I want to cover a horror con for the site. I told you all maybe you gotta not, do is just let me know early. I mean, maybe not the whole weekend, but like I would go like one day because those are typically very smaller conventions. You can get around so you, a small con in a day. Yeah, like I I even thought about and I got to talk about this low because I don't know who's listening. I even thought about maybe jokingly covering an adult con. You know what I mean? You just want to hear me on the phone. I do. I really do. <laughs> uh, no, that is something I've considered after this whole, after last episode with me and you on live, because I mm-hmm. got a lot of, I got a lot of feedback on that going, where are these conventions at? And they do pop up everywhere. Oh, Chicago gets, Chicago gets the Exotica convention, which is like on the level of C2E2. Where it's the hell is that? When the hell is this? I'll have to look it up and I'll let you know. And if you if we can make it work, you and I should go and cover uh, that together. Th- that'd be the weirdest fucking thing I've ever. No, no, it wouldn't. I take that back. No, it would never be not be. It would not be the weirdest thing I've ever covered. I, I can't say that. Um, there's this. So that's one I would really actually like to do just for shits and giggles for the website. Um, there, there's this Heroes and Villains Fest, which is mostly yeah. like the comic book TV shows and stuff. I wouldn't mind going. There's to. one of those in Nashville as well. We we've, we've talked about that one. Um, and then, you know, obviously Wizard World, but Wizard World's on the decline. Wizard so, I mean, World, by the way, does not apply. Like, if you're a small independent publisher and you're trying to do press for events, Wizard World does not favor kindly to you. And it's weird because, like, they need the press because they're, they're like, last year was the, a shell. It was still fun. And I still had a blast. and It was a great time. And I can't wait to go back again this year. But it just, it felt so much smaller than it normally is i I feel like it's starting to go away oh no it's going to wizard world tried to do way too much way too fast like they expanding to what was it 20 or 30 different cities and i understand the concept but the concept can only work for so long before people get tired of it Mm -hmm. and it is the same principle because you have these big names who are only going to show up in the biggest cities and that kind of sucks for your smaller ones because you're literally left out in the cold. Like last perfect example, last year for Wizard World, there were several dates that had the Infinity War cast. Yep. And we didn't get that. We're and we're a big fucking city. And we didn't get fucking Infinity War. And that pissed me off because I got really like I'm like, holy shit, fucking Captain America. Yeah, and the worst Falcon. The worst part of the Wizard World marketing campaign is they market as like these people are going to appear at Wizard World, but not your Wizard World. That's then. That's the the thing that I love about conventions is the inclusiveness of everybody coming together and enjoying it. It's like all the nerds get together and they all get to fangirl out, fanboy out, and just like get together and celebrate fandom in general. And when you do that, you're you're kind of when you say like just not your wizard world that's kind of saying like your version of fandom or your section of the world in terms of fandom doesn't matter as much as this one and that's really kind of a shitty thing to do i just i don't understand it uh really quick though that depression after a con i've only experienced in an event other than a convention one time was that the taylor swift it was i got to I, (laughs) i fucking knew it okay so fun story we go to cover all in never felt that then I mean maybe because Starcast was kind of a crap fest for us, but overall it was a fun weekend. But I never felt that depression. Mm. The next weekend, the the next weekend we go to cover Taylor Swift, and I, you know it's a it's a six hour drive to Kansas City for us, and I it, it's a wonderful mm-hmm. drive too. It's one of the easiest drives ever, 
and we're sitting in the hotel room before the concert. And I'm going, this is going to be fun. Like, I'm super stoked. The, t- the, con- the entire hotel was sold out with Taylor Swift fans that we were staying at. And mm-hmm. there's kids in the lobby running around with Taylor Swift t-shirts and everything. And I'm going, okay, this is going to be cool. So we get there. And the first thing we do is my wife's cousin. We invited her and her best friend to go with us. And they ended up with better seats than us. And <laughs> there, she, her, be, her, her, my, her cousin's best friend's a much bigger Taylor Swift fan than I even I am, and I was mm. okay because we got four tickets for that. Usually, only get two to things, and they were in the front. Like we were, we were all on the floor though. Mm-hmm. So, but she just talks to anybody, and there was like in line before us was this family of this little girl who, whose family drove like twelve hours to be at this concert. And her dad's in the military and stationed in, I don't know if it was Afghanistan, Iraq, one of the places in the Middle East. And that was the surprise for her birthday. He bought her tickets to this concert. Okay. And we got to hear this amazing story from this family. And you take, like, you get those at conventions a lot. And you take that, con- and, and you just start to process going, this is much bigger than I thought. And you walk into the stadium and... And dude, you know what a comic convention is. Everyone's just happy. You don't get the dickheaded things 90% of the time. I've been to some smaller cons where everyone was pissy, but like you know what I mean. Like there's just a wonderment of happiness when you walk into a comic convention. Everyone's just excited and overjoyed to be there. Absolutely. I've never experienced that at a concert until that one. It's the same feeling. You just after it's over, you're like, now what? That was a feeling I had back in, like, I think it was 2009. Uh, Blink-182 had announced that they were reforming and they were going to start making music again. And then they went on a reunion tour. Like, we're back. We're going to play all the hits before we, you know, go into the studio and record a new album. And they came back and they played all the hits. And it was so fun. It was like a religious experience. Like, yeah, you know, for those who are not aware, like my favorite bands are like Weezer and Blink-182. So when they I had that same kind of effect and like everyone was there and they were just experiencing this moment together. So, so much so that when the concert ended, it just immediately was like, huh. Yeah. Now what do I do? What, 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 I guess I could just go drive off a cliff now. I actually fell like, in for, and here's the worst part. The week after we covered RuPaul's Drag Race Work the World Tour. Oof. Like, it took me a while to, and that was the same principle. Like, okay, so we went to three events in a row right there to cover. And I will never forget those three events because they are three polar opposites of each other. Mm-hmm. And everyone was just as happy as they are at comic conventions. It's crazy. That, it's, it, that, that come down that, you know, Post. Like, for anybody who doesn't understand that, it, it really is like getting high and then coming off of it. It really is. It's and, and I've been high takes... numerous times. I probably shouldn't have said that, but I've been high. Oh, I've gotten high too, man. We're a very firm got... a believer in weed should be legal on this show, and yes. I will make it that argument. In the ground, it's okay. <laughs> oh, so many jokes, so little time, so many jokes, <laughs> so many jokes. Uh, good way to close it out. It is. I think that's going to wrap up this edition. Next week, we return on Tuesday. Okay, so here's how this week's going to work out for anybody listening. I don't know if there's going to be a new episode of The Buzz on Friday. I've kind of had to put that show on hiatus for a minute, mostly due to the fact that we're printed, we're <laughs> been planning for Planet Comic Con. Yeah, these next few weeks for the website are going to be yeah, very this is, busy. This, yeah, and I mean, I had to rebuild the entire website because it fucking crashed. And... Okay, so that that being said, I know that Manda's show is debuts next week. Mm-hmm. Our show debuts Saturday on the website. It's up right now at tbkradio.com. The Brody and Richard show, if you want to hear it. Tuesday, live returns with 90s part whatever, four, I think. Or three. <laughs> part I'm, whatever. Yeah, part whatever. That could be the title for this episode. Uh, for that episode. And it's going to be, Ashley's going to join us, and we're going to talk about all the kid stuff from the 90s, because she was a kid in the 90s, so... She's mm-hmm. an expert on that shit, I guess. <laughs> and then on t- for on Thursday next week, we're going to preview Planet Comic Con, which is just going to be a ha- an hour episode devoted to the greatness that Henry Winkler. I'm done. I- I'm just going to tell everyone now, Henry Winkler. Ep- it's just going to be me gushing over Henry Winkler for an hour. 
And, That's going to be an interesting episode. Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> uh, Henry Winkler and Mick Foley conversations for an entire hour. Good luck listening to that episode. Uh, I kid, I kid. But seriously, it's true. And then on Sunday next week, on March 31st, it'll be uh, the live edition of Live at Planet Comic Con, room 2504AB. <laughs> so I think we've got two rooms, which is crazy to me. I, mm-hmm. I think they're opening up the room for our our panel, which just baffles the piss out of me. <laughs> it's awesome, though. That I makes mean, me that nervous. They got confidence in the stuff. I don't have confidence in that show, but I know who's part of that show. So uh, I, I, I know a character is going to be at that show, and I'm already going, oh, fuck. Man, I wish we could be able to listen to that. Uh, you'll be able to watch it, though, coming in April. I'm going to edit it, though. Uh, outside that, and then in May, it is Planet. There is Vision Con. We are talking about covering Fanboy Expo in Knoxville, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then in the fall, we talked about another convention, uh, Little Rock Comic Con, which is close to us, which is like the closest convention to us now. And uh, a couple of Pride events thrown in there. So, Ooh. yeah, no, this year, uh, this year is going to be a little bit more interesting. I know we're doing Work the World Tour because after last year, the, we're going to do it again. Uh, so there's a lot of fun stuff coming up for us to cover. And, and, and on an unrelated note, I get to cover something next next year that I'm fucking stoked over. What's that? I'm covering the Royal Rumble. Whoop, 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 I, I just got whoop, 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 whoop. that. I, I just got that whole thing uh, finalized. So, oh, and um, I am actually uh, unless uh, Amanda goes to it, and since she's a music editor, obviously <laughs> she gets first dibs. But I'm going to Riot Fest this year. Which one's that? There's so many festivals going on. I just conf- get confused. Riot Fest is like the new like punk rock alternative music festival. I'll find out if she is. If she's not, you're writing it then. Okay. Yeah, because we went last year and it was awesome. I had a deep fried Snickers for the first time. Woo! Welcome to actually being a human. Um, Anything deep food? fried's great. I'm from the South, so that's just a staple. To just kind of give you a preference of how bad my diet is, that weekend I ate a deep fried Snickers, a bucket of cheese bacon fries, um, a giant barbecue turkey leg. Um, I had a bunch of uh, Mike's uh, hard lemonade. Uh, what else? What else? It just it was just shitty food the whole weekend. Like good food, but like shitty for your you know colon food. So normal food. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, so that's everything coming up. Don't forget to follow follow us on our social media pages. Well, there's something I don't highlight very often, huh? Well, I've been trying definitely to be more active uh, on the, the Facebook pages, sharing trailers and geek news as it's dropping. Um, you know, I'll definitely, once you give me the Twitter credentials, I'll definitely start going on there more often. And, yeah, because right now I'm the one posting on Twitter and I've enjoyed the shit out of it. But I'm like, I know that I can't be the only one posting on Twitter now if we're growing. Uh, we grew 300 fans this week and I went, oh shit. <laughs> um, so Twitter. Absolutely. Our Twitter uh, is at TBK I'll magazine. With that. I, I've got to, I got to remember it's at TBK magazine. Our Instagram is at TBK mag. Our Facebook is facebook.com slash TBK magazine. I think that's it. Our YouTube is if you can listen to all our podcasts on YouTube, if you don't want to do it on the traditional way, it's at TBK radio. I also just downloaded Podbean. Last yeah, we're week. on the Podbean app. We're on Podbean. That's now our new uh, podcasting host, and I love Podbean. Podbean is an awesome app. Like it is so fluid and natural, and so unconfusing. And the updates are awesome. Like you guys highly recommend. Go go check it out. Yeah, our entire Podbean page is great. So uh, tvkradio.com if you want to check out all of our st- every show ever. Uh, and good luck to you for that. Uh, we're also on Spotify. If you haven't checked that out as well, so you can listen to all the TBK Radio episodes on Spotify. I see. Nice. I think that's it. I think that I think that covers it. Uh, don't forget to check out the Brody and Richard show if you haven't listened to it Saturday night and uh, soon to be on iTunes. The era of butt fuckery commences. My God, I can't Ooh, believe that is the actual text. So much, so much butt fuckery. It's uh, a shame we can't put that on a T-shirt. I might still. I might find a way to do it before it's over. Uh, and and I think that wraps up everything. I think that is all the all the stuff I gotta t- discuss. Oh wait, no, there isn't. Oh. Fuck, man. Uh, I did launch Patreon. 
Yes, got to talk about the Patreon. So here's the deal with Patreon. I told everyone I hate it, and it's true. I hate it. But I'm going to do something different that no one else... I mean, a few people do, but not a lot. We're just doing one tier. It's a dollar. That's it. If you like what we do and want to support us with a dollar a month, cool. If you don't, we're still going to give you the same content. So cool. But uh, the cool thing about being a Patreon subscriber is you get access to some content a little you, earlier yeah, than you get, else. Yeah, you, you're going to get some of the, the new podcast 100% early. I don't know if live is going to be one of the ones early, but I know the Brody and Richard show will be. Uh, and I know Manda's show will be. Mm-hmm. So I think those are going to be the first two. And I might make Cinecrap early. When That'd season, be a cool one. Because season yeah. two is coming very soon. Outside that, you also get a chance to be entered into a chance to win something awesome. The first prize we're giving away is tickets to opening weekend at your local movie theater to Avengers Endgame. Hi, yeah. So I'm excited for that. Mm-hmm. And every time we grow, every time we get a certain number, the prize for the next month grows. And then pretty soon, before you know it, Richard's going to be auctioning off a free new iPhone. Yay! That might actually be one of the things for Christmas. <laughs> like, You're I want to do insane. Those are so fucking expensive. I, I, I know people. I want to do something crazy for Christmas. Like I, I need to start reviewing tech so people will just send me free tech shit. And pretty soon, coming to TBK Live, we're raffling off a free breast implant. You want to know something? We wouldn't. And there's a reason. Because it, okay. So I have that. You know the thing, the 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 fidget spinner. Yes, yes. Those breast implants, like the the silicone ones that they let you touch and shit. Mm-hmm. I have a bad feeling that it would almost be like a fidget spinner for me. <laughs> I'm not saying that to be dirty or anything. It's just I they I have a I have a bad habit of walking in a store and just grabbing a ball and tossing it. Yeah, I I get that way sometimes with stuff too. And I think I would just be playing with a fake boob like tossing it up and down are what are you doing i'm juggling boobs <laughs> just that's what uh, and that's a good way to end it guys until next time uh brody do you have anything you would like to add uh super excited for c2e2 i'm gonna have a whole bunch of fun stuff coming this way uh looking forward to all the growth and excitement that tbk is going to be featuring throughout the year yeah this year uh, i would like to refer to this year as the year we decided to uh hit our lives with viagra because this is the growth year that I have been trying to do for a while. I'm actually setting my set. I'm setting my sights on it for the first time in a long time. Swing. Time to stop being stagnant. Uh, so uh, until next time, guys, uh, we're going to end this show like we do every other show. And that is with Torgo. Torgo, you know what to do, sir. Take us home tonight. <laughs>